Caring voices needed, that's the call to Doreen. Doreen is an incredible friend. She probably is the reason why I was able to change my life because she saw me when I couldn't see myself. That is how she motivates and inspires. From strangers to a circle of friends, this Start Today group now coming together for the first time in Studio 1A. We told each other, no mascara that day because we're tears are going to be crying. That is so Oh beautiful. my gosh. So, so Christy, we've made you guys wait in separate places. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Yes. Pam, Doreen, come on in. Here they there's come. one coming from one direction. All right. Okay, and there's okay, another coming there's from Pam another direction. Over here. Kristen! Oh, <laughs> oh my God! Oh. oh my God! Wait, we have a come on in. We have another. Come on in. We have another. One more. Oh, there oh, they Here, come, come on, over take here. a come seat. Sit. Let me, yeah. let me Oop, scoot over. Okay. Here. This is amazing. Oh my God. Like no the, this we is amazing. No, we won't enough. separate you anymore. This is it. <laughs> oh so, my goodness. What are you thinking? What does oh it feel like to be goodness. together, uh -oh. together oh for the first time? We feel like family already. Oh my but to see them in person and to be able to touch. Oh my God. You stepped us apart. Tell me something. Where do the tears come from? You guys come from different parts of the country. You just met over, you know, walking. Yes. Where are the tears from? Our hearts. <laughs> um, yes. Great, wonderful people. Where we've come from, what we struggled through, and where we are now, thanks to the Start Today program. Yes. What has it meant to, to be part of this group? I mean, you guys obviously have formed this bond, but it's such a bigger group. I go on, I'm scrolling, I'm seeing these these messages and this encouragement. Pam, I've, Sorry, I've watched you. Uh, no, uh, uh, when you po when you commented on my video the first time, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> Uncle Al knows me, I'm famous. <laughs> He mentioned my dogs, and the other day, Detricia mentioned me, and he had my pictures up there. My husband and I were watching him, like, oh my gosh, That's the amazing. lives that we've changed just by exactly. posting our positive attitudes yes. with each other. It's everything. And you guys have everything. done it. That's the amazing oh, thing. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. amazing. You know, uh, uh, I think we want to make this morning even better. You know, we want to bring in another Start Today member you might recognize, our, our leader, Stephanie Monson. Oh! Stephanie, come on in. You know, I am so incredibly proud Aww. of all three of you, and not only for transforming your lives, but you have encouraged thousands of other members, other Today Show viewers, to encourage and, and change their own lives. And as a, your trainer and coach, that's like the best thing I could ever ask for. Not only are you making the change for yourself, but once you take that time and put yourself first, you have that ripple effect. Yeah. I'm so excited to yes. meet you in person. Yes. 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 <laughs> I got to tell you, that was amazing. And it's always great seeing our Start Today group bringing folks together. Well, up next, we've got an inspiring woman who took charge of her life after an unexpected wake-up call. Plus, another community member who embarked on her own health journey. And she's going to share some great advice how we can all do it, too. We'll be right back after this.
Welcome back to Start Today. We're continuing to highlight folks who have made incredible transformations and taken control of their health. Monica Poole joined our community after an unexpected wake-up call about her health. From that point, she commit to a better lifestyle. Everything changed when she shifted her approach to food and fitness by taking small steps to improve her health. Monica recently stopped by Studio 1A to share her progress with us. But first, here's a look at her journey. My health journey kicked off in January of 2022. The catalyst was when my brother needed a kidney donor and my health prevented me from being a candidate. I was overweight, I had high cholesterol, and I was pre-diabetic. I decided to meet with a nutritionist who suggested the Mediterranean diet might be a sustainable lifestyle change for me. I had been a yo-yo dieter for most of my life. In addition to changing my eating habits and tracking my food for mindful eating, I started walking approximately 7,000 steps throughout the day. I lost 20 pounds by the summer of 2022, but then my weight plateaued. That's when Start Today became part of my journey, giving me the community I needed to keep going. I keep moving all day with additional walking, weightlifting, and my latest endeavor, yoga. Start Today helped me lose an additional 40 pounds. I'm full of energy and I'm more productive at work. When I was overweight, I wanted to fade into the background. Now, I want to be seen. All right, All right well, let's see. Yay. Monica is here with us this morning. Monica, come on out. Good morning, welcome. Good morning. We're so happy for you. Thanks for Thank coming you. in. Thank, Thank you so much. Guys. Thank you. I gotta give you a hug. Oh, please, absolutely. Come on I'm in, bring you it forever. in. Oh, thank you, thank you. See, you. are self at home. Yeah. Thank for, you so, so much. So first of all, before we, we, we get into your story, how's your brother doing? Well, um, he's still waiting. He's on the kidney list. Mm -hmm. He's O positive. So if you don't, if you know anything about kidney, kidney mm -hmm. donors, that's the longest list. Mm -hmm. um, he, he, his name's Zach Douglas, and I am, you know, we're just all just waiting. Mm -hmm. Just waiting. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. And, yeah. And did you reach your goal of, of getting healthy enough to become an, uh, a kidney donor? I did. Um, I worked with um, Cleveland Clinic, Florida, okay. and they were excellent as far as educating me on what I needed to do to be healthy as a kidney donor, mm -hmm. as well as um, staying healthy for the rest of my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was really the aha moment, yeah. because with yo-yo dieting, I was always focused on just losing the weight. In right. um, Cleveland Clinic Florida really just drilled it in that this is a lifetime commitment. Right. But unfortunately, they found an underlying health issue I had oh. that I wasn't even aware of, hmm. so it. I was denied. Well, but on the upside, you know now. But so. it yeah. changed my life, yeah. so it's kind of ironic yes. that I started this journey to give to others, and he, you know, the, the journey actually gave to me yeah. and changed my life. That's great. What do you think were the, the biggest reasons that you, you struggled before this, this journey? I, I really think it was um, a perspective. I was like, oh, you know, I, I just have to lose the weight. It's all about the diet. It's all about the scale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and this round, I was like, no, it's all about, it's all within my control. Right. Mm. Um, they recommended the Mediterranean diet, which I found to be very easy to follow. Mm -hmm. um, I also tracked what I ate, so it was mindful eating. Um, and I took steps, I had this goal, but I focused on the daily steps yeah. mm -hmm. the, um, that actually um, made the difference. So yeah. now it's not about the scale, it's, it just magic happens. When you focus on what you can do every mm -hmm. day that's within your control, the magic happens yeah. and it's still happening. Yeah. So we're coming up on vacation season, spring break, then summer vacations. So how do you maintain you know, this, the regiment that you have now when you're traveling, when you're, you know, do you have yep. cheat days? I mean, how do you make it work? Well, it's, it's hard when you travel, but I just went on a cruise with my family, uh, my brother-in-law and my sister-in-law, and we just kept walking in the morning. Mm -hmm. And Start Today is actually really in inspirational because every day you see people walking. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm happy to report I didn't gain a single pound back. Wow. wow. And, on a know, cruise? I'm, that's a yeah, feat. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> that's a feat. And um, I mean, I didn't, I wasn't 
perfect, but that's the other thing. This yeah. is the lifestyle. Still vacation, yeah. too. You yeah. want to enjoy your life. And, right. And, and really quickly, yes. Monica, because a lot of folks, it's it's taking that first. It's starting today. What, what you, For folks who are trying to think, they're just so overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. What's your one takeaway? Focus on what you can do today. Have a goal, an eating goal, and a moving goal. Um, for the eating goal, focus on fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. Get more in your diet. Um, for the moving goal, just start moving. And when I first started, I would take 10 minutes here, mm -hmm. 10 minutes there. Yeah. I would break it up through the day. I mean, now I, I walk an hour and a half every yeah. morning, and it's nothing. Um, but it took me a year to get sure. there. Mm -hmm. wow. So and you um, did get there. That's the yeah. That's, that's the, the takeaway. Thing. And this past weekend, we walked 20 miles here in New oh York City. Oh my goodness! Good for you, well, Monica. Thank you. You're an inspiration. Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> We are so proud of Monica. Her story is a great example of how you take those small steps, end up with a big impact. Well, coming up, a community member who's changing her life one step at a time. And then later, how a second chance at life shifted a woman's perspective on health and fitness. We'll be right back. with more start today. Last year, Detricia Woods Meadows set a big goal for herself, walking 10,000 steps every day. And like many of us, that pandemic, well, it flipped her daily walks to work upside down. Then knee surgery set her back even further. But she was inspired to take charge of her health after she came across our Start Today Facebook group. Well, since then, Detricia has transformed her life and even reversed her pre-diabetes. Check out her story and the tip she shared on the third hour to help others kickstart their own journeys. Years I made excuses about why working out wasn't for me. By 2022, I was out of shape at my highest weight ever and in pain from arthritis and a torn meniscus. Plus, once the pandemic hit, my walks at work turned into me sitting at home. I knew I needed to make a change, but I never felt motivated enough to do it on my own. So I called my cousin Anthony and we decided we'd hold each other accountable to walk every day, sending our step counts back and forth to motivate each other. A few months later, I came across a Today Show story about Doreen Fox who lost weight by walking around inside her house. I was walking around my house too. I read that Doreen was part of the Start Today community, so I figured I'd give the group a try myself. As I continued to focus on improving my health, I scheduled a routine physical with my doctor where I found that I was pre-diabetic. I was scared to tears and I knew that letting myself go further was not an option. I immediately bumped up my step goal to 10,000 steps a day and I aimed to increase my goal by 500 to 1,000 steps each month. 
At home, I focused on portion control and I increased my water intake. My work had only begun and I was excited to see where the journey would take me. All right, well, that is Detricia's story. Yes. But we have her here with us this morning. Detricia, come, come on out. out. Hey. All right. Oh, my God. Hey. Come this way, around this way. Yeah, we'll go around this way. Yes. Wow. Hello. It's so nice to meet you. It's so nice to meet you. Come, come. Ooh. Congratulations. Yay, no, don't cry. Don't cry. No, or or oh, uncle Al. Okay. I like that. I mean, tears are okay. Yes. My gosh. Yes. So, Detricia, this is what a great transformation. What a wonderful story. And, and I think like a lot of us, you know, there are different reasons for you taking that first step, no pun intended. So, so what was it for you? Well, for me, it was, um, I just recently learned that two people that I, I knew growing up had passed away, mm. and one was uh, complications of diabetes, the other one was heart disease. Mm. And we were the same age, oh. and I'm like, I don't want to have RIP next to my name oh, right. at 50 years old, you know. And then my mom, who's 70, she was walking uh, just walking me out the box, right? <laughs> and I'm like, Mom, I'm 70 years old and she's walking better than me. Oh. So I, I got on the phone, like I said, with my cousin and we talked about it and I'm just like, he's like, what are we gonna do? Mm -hmm. I said, I gotta get this weight off. I know what I need to do, but I can't, I don't have the motivation to do it. But we just jumped out there and we started doing it. We set our goals and I haven't stopped since. Today is 280 for me. Oh my good, 200. Wow. In 80 days of walking. Wow. Way to go. Patricia, you look absolutely beautiful. Thank you. So a lot of us But you've got a glow, And too. you do. You Thank really you. do. So a lot of people watching and a lot of us and somebody sitting in the seat, you, st <laughs> you start and you're doing well, right? But how do you keep it going? I mean, 280 mm -hmm. days, sometimes it's hard for a couple of weeks. It, it is hard sometimes. Sometimes it's like, I don't want to do it, but then I, ha I have to remember my why. Your why. Why am I doing this? I'm doing this for me. I'm taking care of me. Nobody else is going to do this mm -hmm. but me. So that's, I, I just make myself get, whether I feel good or not, whether I'm hurting or not, I get up and I move every so day. So where are you on your journey now? Are you still... You know, do you still have goals that you're, you're trying mm -hmm. to reach? I'm still I'm trying to get to Wonderland, as the Start Today <laughs> family calls it. I um, what's so Wonderland? Getting into the 100 pounds. Mm -hmm. oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, the 100 pounds range. Right now, I'm sitting at 209, so I've lost 65 pounds mm -hmm. as today, um, and wow. I, I have about 20 pounds to go until okay. I reach my my first goal. Mm -hmm. So and I'll keep pushing. Well, wow. Patricia, we are just rooting you on. Thank I mean, you. congratulations. It takes a lot of hard work, but you made that what first step. Look Thank at you, you now. Thank you. Any, tip it up? Any tips you want to offer to people at home as far as getting started? Um, my first tip is to see your doctor, yeah. mm -hmm. talk it Absolutely. over with your doctor. Even walking can cause hip issues mm -hmm. or what have you, but go talk to your doctor first schedule that physical so that they can see if any underlining mm -hmm. issues are going on and then make small realistic goals yeah. you don't right. want to say oh i want to do 10,000 steps and then you discourage yourself right. by exactly. not doing as much so start off with small goals um and just be kind to yourself. Yeah. Wow. Did if Stephanie Mansour oh, calls in say. sick, you can fill in for <laughs> yes. your motivation. You're very motivational. Thank, Thank you so Thank much. You. That was just incredible. She really believed in herself, and we are still cheering her on. Just ahead, how a heart transplant gave one Start Today community member a second chance at life. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Start Today. This next community member can walk for miles. Now that's impressive enough, but it's been less than five years since her heart transplant surgery. Kathy Augustine is one of the 130,000 folks in our Start Today community. She visited Studio 1A back in February to tell us about her remarkable journey. And then join me and Today Fitness contributor Stephanie Mansour for a heart healthy workout. I was 27 years old and teaching kindergarten when I got sick with what I thought was a bad cold. It went on for weeks and I continued to get weaker. My mother insisted I get a chest x-ray. That's when the doctors discovered I had cardiomyopathy, a disease that changes the way the heart functions. I was rushed to the hospital for emergency open heart surgery five years ago. And then my heart stopped. After being revived, I lived with a heart pumping device called an LVAD for six months. Then I received a life-saving heart transplant. I had to learn how to walk again and use walking as a means to recover. My favorite place to walk is at Universal Studios. I joined the Start Today Walking Challenge last June because of its inspiring community. We're here at Universal Orlando. Our and in November of last year, I was able to be one of the walkers. Here we go! Alongside Al Roker and Stephanie Mansour at Universal. Since my surgery, I've lost 120 pounds and walked to 5K for Donate Life. I continue to walk to keep my heart strong. Now, let's let's meet her. Kathy Augustine, come on out. Good to see you. Oh, my gosh. That's fantastic, Kathy. Nice to see you. And, of course, look at that. That Woo! is crazy. What a, what a transformation. Well, we've got Stephanie Monsour, our Today Fitness contributor here. Kath, come on over. Uh, good morning to both of you. It is so good to see you. So first of all, how are you feeling? How are you doing with your new heart? I feel great. Every yeah. day's a new day. Yeah. And, and, now, there was a point, I understand, you had to relearn how to walk. How, how difficult was that? I literally could not. Like, I was in the hospital for two months, and mm -hmm. I couldn't um, stand. I couldn't walk. I had to go to rehab and physically learn how to get up and walk, move my feet, and I just had to do that after my LVAD surgery. How, how important was that for, for your heart health, your, it was, your recovery? It was crucial because of I needed to get walking and get active, and my heart needed to get healthy. Mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned our, our Start Today Walking Club became part of your life. Yes. I joined in June of 2022, and um, I've just been a member, and I've seen all the motivational stories and everything. Um, Stephanie's been motivational. You've been motivational on your videos. Um, everything is just great because of every day there's new posts about how much people have walked or how much uh -huh. things people have been motivated. So, so, so Steph, you know, we, we think about, you know, it's Valentine's Day in, in yes. February, heart and emotion, but uh, it's also about health. That's right. You know, a lot of people think about cardio exercise when it comes to their heart health, and that is extremely important. We've got our walking challenge, uh -huh. you know, but in addition for this month, for Heart Healthy Month, we are focusing on strength training, and that's because research actually shows when you combine cardio with strength training, uh -huh. you get more benefits for your heart than if you were just to do cardio exercise. And that's because we know building lean muscle mass helps us to speed up the metabolism, right. burn more calories, and therefore help us maintain a healthy weight. All right, so you talk about upper bar body exercise. Yes, so we're going to start off with some upper body exercises. Okay. So we're going to grab these dumbbells. I All recommend right. starting kind of light, mm -hmm. three pounds, um, and then go up from there. Okay. So what we're going to do first is the W exercise. Okay. So I really want you to connect emotion this month. Ah. Our heart healthy month. Feel like a winner as Ooh. you go up into that W and then bring it back down. We're opening wide on this diagonal and then coming down to the shoulders. Abs pull in. Mm -hmm. Feel that, Kathy? Yep. Yeah, working the upper body and the shoulders. And then the next upper body exercise is a V for victory. Okay. So I want you to feel victorious as you do your workout. If you're sitting at home wondering, oh gosh, I don't know if I can do these with mm -hmm. the weights, that's okay. Put the weights down and just right. do this for some shoulder mobility. And, and how many uh, reps do you do? Ten so? repetitions, okay. and then we move on to the next exercise. Okay. Next exercise? Yep. Now, I'm going to show us goddess pose. So oh. we're all going to unleash that inner goddess here. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> Even you, Al. Yeah. <laughs> so opening wide into a wide leg open toe squat. We're going to lower down, abs in tight, knees out to the sides, and then stand up, squeeze the glutes at the top. Good. So we lower down. That inner goddess is unleashing here. Stand up uh -huh. and working the quads, this the hip flexors. <laughs> <laughs> and even the hamstrings. Now, the next exercise is a warrior, too. So, Kathy, obviously, you are such a warrior. Al, you've been through.
through so much, you're a warrior as well. What I want you to do is open the legs here into a warrior two position. Good, knee over the ankle. Good, turn, yes, exactly, Al, perfect. Abs in, we bend the knee over the ankle and then we press to stand up. So this is a dynamic yoga pose actually uh -huh. that we turn into a strength training exercise. So if you're at home wondering, okay, how can I unleash my inner warrior? Maybe right. you've been through some health issues. Maybe you're just having a hard time getting started this year. Scan that QR code on your screen. Join our Start Today community. People like Kathy, myself, yep. you, Al, we're motivating you every step of the way. Kathy, Steph, thank you so much. Big thank you to our community members for sharing their stories with us. We hope it's inspiring you to embrace your own health journey. And don't forget, our online community is growing by the day. Scan that QR code to sign up for a daily dose of information and motivation in our Start Today newsletter and connect with other folks on the same mission to get healthy. And that wraps up this episode of Start Today. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Today All Day. Join Hoda Kotb for season three of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Open your eyes, you get to decide. How's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. Over the years, I've been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. We had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. Darn. You know, I almost got out of this one clean. Turn it down. Oh my God, I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. But I'm hoping to put that all behind me. Today, cookbook author and Southern comfort food extraordinaire, hostess with the mostess, Elizabeth High School, is here to teach me the basics of how to cook. She's gonna be my guide as I attempt to make steak two ways. First, marinated skirt steak with roasted pepper and onions, and then a steakhouse style filet mignon with roasted Brussels sprouts. I've been waiting a long time to use that cast iron pan. Frankly, I've been avoiding it, but no more. So let's get started. Again. I know, I'm so excited. You are my Obi-Wan to is my Luke it. Skywalker. This is it, honey. I promise we're going to make it happen. And I mean, honestly, who does not love a perfectly cooked steak? I love a steak. Everybody does. And I swear, I swear, it's so much easier than you could ever imagine, okay? okay. This is our plan. Marinate the skirt steak, cut and prep the vegetables, grill the skirt steak, sear, baste, and finish the filet mignon, let the meat rest, Cut and serve. All right, so here is our marinade skirt steak. Go ahead and get this out. Do I just go to the butcher and say, I want skirt steak? Exactly. They won't laugh at me. No, let's unfold him. Why do we call it skirt steak? It's just that cut of meat. It goes actually uh, under the abdomen. That oh, is yes, exactly like, where it, it goes. It like fits you, ooh, right, the waist. Now, okay. Yes, if you have a piece of meat that is as big as your waist, yes. you're going to want to cut it. Yes. Okay? So we're going to cut this into four pieces so that we can manage it in our, um, in our skillet. Now, okay? is this one of those against the grain things? Not right now. After we cook it? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay. But right now, I just need you to cut this into cut four pieces. Okay, I got it. Yep, yeah. Nice, long, good. Very, look at you. Oh, my God. Look, look, we get some skills. We're just going to measure out all of our ingredients for our marinade okay. and put them right in the bag. Cheers. I mean, seriously, it's Wednesday. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Only on days that end with Y. <laughs> Those are the only days I drink. Okay, let's go. One quarter cup packed light brown sugar. This I know how to do because of baking. Now, and remember this, yes, open this up. This is kind of interesting. So we put a little piece of bread in here. Why? Uh, well, because it's gonna keep the brown sugar from getting hard. This is very soft brown I'm sugar. I'm telling you, that's because of the bread. Roll it in there. 
Let's okay. do our soy. Two tablespoons soy sauce. One tablespoon. One tablespoon of balsamic. Of balsamic. Very good. One can chipotle in adobo well, sauce. First, it's tomatoes, onion, garlic is oh. making the sauce. It's earthy, it's smoky, and it's going to add another depth of flavor to this marinade. So let's chop this up. Okay. We want to chop. Are it we up. chop up all the? No, all uh, no, that would set us all on fire. And so we want it to be. You're good. Okay. Yep. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And then once you kind of get through. Mm -hmm. Real then you can always go back over it. Yeah, like I would just, my instinct would be to kind of like do this thing. Uh, very nice. Yes, look, that, see, did you just see that? Instinct. Instinct. You're getting it, you're getting okay. it. So because it's a little bit of a tougher piece of meat, mm -hmm. that's why we're gonna marinate this. Now okay. listen, you can do this for eight hours. We would love 24 hours. You mean marinating? Exactly. So, I mean, if you ran home and, you know, even if you only had an hour, you know, that's gonna be good. So First, we want to pull them. all of this air out of this. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's one of my favorite parts. I don't know why, do. I, why I love loving that. I love I you. <laughs> sake, I love you. And so then what we'll do is massage it. Do you feel like this is I do. fully coated? I think coated? you've done an absolutely and beautiful job with that. And then yes, that okay. is gonna go into the fridge to marinate. And so we'll okay. just put it back here. All right. So now we finished our marinade and we're gonna start our roasted vegetables. Okay. And I have got something that is going to change your life when it comes to this. Tell me. So this is, it has all the vegetables that you might wanna roast and then the different times. And you don't have to have a recipe. This is gonna be so freeing for you, honestly. So we're gonna start with our Brussels sprouts. I'm gonna show you and then you're gonna finish. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna cut the end off of it and then we're gonna cut it in half okay. and it's gonna go into our bowl. Okay. okay? What about frozen? Uh, Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Well, th what happened? That's is, how we did it in the '70s in my mom's well, kitchen. Well, and that is why we didn't like them. Oh, I hated them. They were just when I was a little kid to put one bite of a Brussels sprout oh, in my mouth. Oh, there was. was oh God, it was close to torture earth. as you can imagine. Earth. If you roast them though, it's a whole new world. And then here we are again. You've got those done. Those All are right. beautiful. Set them over here. And that's what we're going to pair with that filet mignon. Okay. And now we're going to move on to our peppers. And so what I like to do is cut it in half. Go ahead and cut it straight just in like half. Uh-huh. Being very careful to see where you're beautiful. And then I just pull this right out. Oh. And then we're going to make nice long slices. You want to keep it even. Mm -hmm. That's one of the main secrets about roasting vegetables mm -hmm. is that they all need to cook and get finished at the same time. What about these white bits? Like so I those, used to cut those out. And sometimes. you can, you can. I want to show you something. Mm -hmm. So if you will hold your knife here, mm -hmm. it's going to give you a lot more security, mm -hmm. and I think you're going to be more comfortable with it. I like your grip. The grip is better. It's so much better because you have more control. And when you have more control of your knife, you're more comfortable. All right. So now we're going to get to our our onions. Oh, onions. How are we doing it though? Dice? Now, we're going to do just like a rainbow. So just a half moon. So we're going to cut it in half. Okay. Both ends off and then keep going. So what we're going to do, we're going to roast all of our vegetables on separate pans because again, well, that sounds like a pain. Well, it is, but it's really going to make that much of a difference. When you're only using a few ingredients mm -hmm. and salt and pepper, the technique is so important in making this successful. Okay. okay? I would have thrown so it on the I know you would have. Who cares? And some of them would have burned, and okay. some of them would have been raw, and then you would have been frustrated and said, I don't know how to roast vegetables. Yeah. Okay, so it's technique. Yeah. You're getting very good with your knife, and I'm proud of you. Well, thank you. I'm working on it. But I do have to be reminded about where to hold it, to grip it. It's like a bat when you when you, you choke up on the bat. Or your tennis racket. You know yeah, this. I do. If you held your tennis racket with your finger hanging out like that, you wouldn't be worth a damn. Mm -mm. Okay. I'm so. still not worth a damn. <laughs> <laughs> Just FYI, but you, I take point taken. Point taken. So now I want you to generously olive oil these. This there, there we go. Okay. Beautifully coated. Mm -hmm. Good. And that's gonna help to ensure that this is gonna caramelize. Okay. We want it to get that beautiful brown color. Now I can't see, stop. See, I, I know, it's kind of fun, yeah. isn't it? Now we're gonna salt, salt it generously. We're gonna pepper it generously. Now do I need to like sprinkle then toss or just sprinkle, throw it all in there? Sprinkle. Too much? That's, that's a it. lot. That's gonna be done. Okay, right. that's all you need and then we'll toss it. It kind of helps if you want to you know, go ahead and go in the circle so you're not just dumping it oh, in the middle. Okay. That will kind of help it just okay. a little bit. I would say less pepper than salt, no? And, and that's the great news. It's yours. Okay. So do whatever you want. This recipe is not the boss of you. Yeah. You are the boss of it, okay? Right. Take that recipe. <laughs> I'm not going right, to take it anymore from you. Mix. Now, and also at home, listen, if you don't want to pull out three different sheet pans. I don't own three different sheet well, pans. Well, that's the deal. Okay, I get that. You can always separate okay. it. Okay. So you could do Brussels sprouts here, onions here. So let's okay. throw the onions on one. Okay. Uh-huh. 
Okay, okay I just uh -huh. need to share. Okay. Yes. It says don't crowd the pan. Correct. We keep, do not want to crowd it. These want to keep their social distance. Let's mm -hmm. flip these little guys over oh. because the more surface area that's on the bottom of this pan, okay. the more beautiful they're going to be. Mm. All right. And now we have one more. Spread that And why out. are we doing three pans again? Because they're all going to cook at different times. Oh, okay. Okay? And Makes if we sense. otherwise, the Brussels sprouts are going to be raw, these are going to be overdone, and yeah. the onions are going to be burnt. And we cannot have that. No. And so now we'll go in the oven with these. Why don't we put peppers and onions on top, and then we will do our sprouts on the bottom. Okay. Well, that was easy enough. There we go. Mm -hmm. Ooh, now. Out. So what we'll do is we're going to let that cook for a little bit, okay. and then what we want to do is we'll want to rotate the pan. Like just move them around. Exactly. But do I have to flip them? I could get obsessed about flipping each other. You could, over. but you don't need to. Okay. okay. Very nice. That's good. Okay. All right. All right, so now our vegetables are roasting in the oven. You just gave them a nice toss, so we're gonna leave those alone for a minute, and we are gonna get ready to cook that beautiful skirt steak. Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead and grab that. It's 24 hours it's been marinating. So now, now, what we're gonna do is pull it out. We're gonna put it on this paper towel. What will happen when we get ready to cook this? Our amazing. pan is going to be as hot as the hinges of hell. Do you understand me? <laughs> Okay. And if this marinade is still on here. Like that was droopy. No, you're good. Okay. We're going to pat it. I mean, we're about to get serious with this. Okay. Because it will end up just steaming it and almost boiling it. Oh. And that's not what we want. We want that beautiful caramelized crust. So we are really going to get all the moisture out of it. Okay. So we are going to press on this. We're soaking it up. Now let's come over here. I want you to. Let me ask a question. Is yes. this pan hot? Hot as the hinges of hell, honey. It is hot. Do not touch it. Brush it with um, the canola oil, okay. and that will help it not stick. When we did that marinade, you have to remember that we added a little bit of sugar. We've also got balsamic that has mm -hmm. sugar in it. It's going to smoke a little bit, okay? okay. Smoking now. It, yes, because it, it's hot. So let's turn our vent on, which is that little button right over there, and that's gonna pull the smoke up. Okay, that vent's over there. How's that gonna help? It will. Okay. All right, let's okay. put that down. Doesn't matter which side? No, just put it down. Woo! Very good. So, but this little bit of smoke, it's gonna be so worth it, I promise. Let me get the grandma timer, grandma timer. Grandma, grandma alert. And um, so literally, it's just gonna take three minutes on both sides. Okay. Why do we use um, a cast iron pan? Why couldn't I just use a skillet? Oh, honey, because cast iron holds the heat. It cooks so evenly. It really is just the absolute best way when you're getting ready to cook a steak. Now, so, is it hot? It's hot as the hinges of hell. Just kidding. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's You're sticky. Okay. It's, it's broken. No, I it's burned not. It. No, the reason that it's sticky is we had a little bit of sugar in the marinade. But look at that. It's beautiful. Okay. I got to tell you, I would have said that's burnt. No, it's caramelized. That is absolutely gorgeous. Oh my God, I need the jaws of life Calm to down, get this thing up. Deep breath, deep breath. You're good. 
there you are. Oh boy. Oh Look boy. Look at those beautiful marks. I You're mean, it looks it. pretty. It smells good. But see, this is where I would have felt like I did it wrong. Absolutely not. Okay. That's what you want. That's that wonderful crisp, right. caramelized. Mm. Oh, let's get on there. That's the heaven. I mean, come on. You got it. You got it. There you go. It's a stubborn Excellent. one. Okay, three minutes at Grandma. Beautiful. Three minutes on the other beautiful, side. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes. I think we're right there. We're about there. Just pull it up. Good. Look Excellent. at that. Excellent. It doesn't Excellent. matter what size. Look at how beautiful that is. I must say it is. Let's put it over there and let it rest. Okay. Rest for 10 minutes. Be careful, that pan's hot. I know. The pan is hot. Wait, I'm sorry, is the pan hot? <laughs> let me turn this off. But now it's not hot. veggies out of the oven right. before I burn them. Ooh. Oh, they look good. I See? think they do. And now we've got our onions mm -hmm. and then our peppers. Should those have been browner or does that look good to I you? I think that's nice. Okay. I think that's really good. We're going to use these for fajitas after mm -hmm. we slice that skirt steak up and then the Brussels sprouts we'll have this that with our fajitas. beautiful filet. This mignon. is a fajita seed. You are absolutely right. All right, so now we have our vegetables out and we're ready to go with the, the, the filet mignon. Oh. Okay. We have two beautiful fillets. They're yes. so cute. Aren't they lovely? There's two beautiful. One, one for, for me, you. one for you. One for me, exactly. Um, so, salt and pepper generously. If you don't season it well now, you literally have missed the boat. Sure. You said generous. Generously. Uh huh. Sides? Absolutely. If you're going to eat the sides, you want it to be seasoned, right? Okay. Just to, there. Good. Very nice. Let's do that on both fillets. And then we'll do the same thing with the pepper. Do you know if I served <laughs> filet mignon to my husband? Oh, he'd lose his mind. I was going to say he'd have a heart attack, not because of the red meat, <laughs> but because I had actually I'm telling you, cooked something. No, He'll just be like, where's and the I Anna love, go? I love how you just did that. That was a oh. pro thing. Ooh, dang that it. was pro. You know what? I don't like things to go to waste. And there you are. OK, how do you think? Good? It's perfect. Okay. Absolutely great, perfect. Great, great. I want you to go ahead and at least smash your garlic. And let's go ahead and pull our rosemary off. Use the side of this. Hold on. Let's like do this? one clove at a time. Oh. And let's turn the knife away from us. Okay? Oh, okay. Good. And then, but I'm and then you're going to use Should your Should I hand. cut these tips off before or no? Oh, no. It ain't going to do a damn thing. It ain't going to do anything. Okay. Perfect. Good. Now, is that smashed enough? Well, I mean, I, I would have put a little I mean, more effort into it. I mean, that doesn't seem that more smashed. Let's do it. Come on. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Very That's nice. That's good, That's but there's it. still big old... Well, if you want to okay. cut it up, you can. Well, it's do. not necessary. It's says more smash. Just... I want to be smashed. Okay, smash it. Smash it, smash and it. And not just smash with the margaritas. It. And not just with the margaritas. And That's then we... smashed enough, you're saying. You're beautiful. Okay. It's just it's just a quick, easy, okay. you know, it's just a throw-in, just okay. a little flavor. Okay. And then we have our rosemary. Please, from one sprig, is this the pull-off deal? Ah. Uh, you is taught me it, that before. Is it, is it? it? I think it is. Okay. So we'll start at the top, and then you're going to pull back. Good. And now, 
You can do it. And doesn't that make it so much easier? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, and then just pick off the little ones on the end. Mm -hmm. I enjoy brushing oil. Now, before we go, we're already starting to smoke. Let's get that vent on, okay? Oh, vent. Let's turn the vent on. Hey. Okay. Woo! So should we go for it? We're ready. Let's do it. Okay. All right, so here we are. Oh, and hear that? So that's nice. That sizzle was ready. How long does it do? I think it's probably going to take about, you know, two to three minutes. We just want to get that beautiful caramelization. We want to lock in all of those juices. This is about, like, the crust, basically. Very much so. Should I be much. doing something with this butter to get ready for this whole scene? Well, I mean, you could go ahead and cut it. You think that's three times? No, that's not. Like there. Right there. That's right. And I a little that more isn't going to hurt this. Correct. And just know, Savannah, that smoke is normal. All right. All right? Oh, that's nice. That's very, very good. Isn't that? And now we want to go side, side, side. Okay, so that's how it should look. I love it. I love it. All right, so now this seems side. like a tricky little thing here. Why? Is You've it three got it. Okay, is it three minutes on each side? Do you want to go ahead and go ahead and do oh, the yes, other one too? Yeah. Beautiful. Are you just not concerned about my steak, Savannah? As long as yours is what perfect. Okay, yeah. Does so each, let's do a flip. Does each side, like, oh, geez. Oh, boy. You oh, can boy. do it. We, mm. Let it go. go. All right, and Look. then your guy goes over. Oh. I swear it is just like Mr. Miyagi and the Karate Kid. <laughs> I'm so proud. It really is. I'm so proud Look of it, you. Elizabeth. But Savannah. I mean, that was beautiful the way you just flipped oh, that. Thank you. You're getting this. There's nothing like low expectations, Elizabeth. <laughs> this is fun. All right, let's get that that side right there. You're getting this the bottom, right? Uh, we're still doing sides, and yeah, then we're sides, sides. Okay. And I still have this too. One more little side there. Very this one nice. doesn't have another side, interestingly. Okay, so then we have the bottom. <laughs> like some people. Oh. But wait, now should we do the other? This is still a rare side. And should so I do now that? we'll put that one down. Get and on while that end. one's working, mm -hmm. then we're going to do our little pan sauce. Okay. So we'll add our butter. And I'm just throwing <laughs> it in there. Yeah, throw that in. Fun. And then you can kind of hold the pan with the towel, okay? Be very careful. Mm, and yeah. now let's add our garlic and our rosemary. Now look how it looks like it's burning. I'm it's sorry. It's not. It's just, okay. it's not. Just it's throw this all in. Throw it in. Just sprinkle it around. Very good. And then we have this spoon, and we're going to just baste it. Be real careful of that So what's basting? That pan. Just spooning it on? Uh -huh. Just fill up a nice big spoon and pour it over. Mm. Oh, look at you. Talk to me. Okay, that's it. Come Keep on. going. Is it already like the leaves and the bits are there? Uh huh. Now is it Very bad that nice. I just moved it? It's perfectly fine. Okay. Look at that. I mean, that looks like uh, that's it. Come to mind. That is a tell. That's it. I need that's it right what now. You're just looking like for. that. Keep basting. Uh huh. And now we're getting ready. One more baste. When we put our thermometer in, you want to be really careful that we go right into the middle of this steak, okay? okay. If you go all the way to the bottom, it's going to give us a false read. It'll be too okay. hot. Oh. So just stick it in. Let's go all the way to the middle. Right now, we're at 74 degrees on okay. this thermometer. I want to go, like, in the middle. Uh-huh. Are you in the middle? I feel like I am. Okay, good. So this is going to be a team effort. Look at how it's coming up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold this. You're going to put one hand here and one pan there. Yeah. And then we're going to take it to the oven. Oh, but we didn't check the other one. Do you what? want me to take this out? No, no, no. It's fine. They're the same size. They're okay. going to cook just about the same. Do you want me to take this out now? No. It's going to go into the oven with the thermometer. It's an oven read. Isn't that go fancy? the oven? Well, this is going to stay out. That's going to stay in. Whoa. And okay. we're going to do this together. How we... Now Which the route? oven's hot. Go on in. So if you were at home by yourself. Yeah. Yay! You would wait and you would put your, you would put your thermometer in now. And then um, you would shut it. And look at it here. Look at there. Wow! Isn't that fun? And then we could even turn on an oven light if we want to look at it in here. So we want to get up to about, well, 127. Okay. Because once it comes out, the temperature is going to raise a few more degrees. Okay. 130 is going to be a perfect medium rare. Okay. So we'll just sit here and let this so you come you do 127 up. figuring it's going to continue to cook when it's out on the... Correct. It's, How long in the oven is that's it really? why, I mean, it's like, what, four minutes, yeah. three minutes? So it's quick. -y. Okay. It is quick, and so, and that is the thing that's a little unnerving, mm -hmm. because no, it's not hard, it's just fast. You just got to so ready to roll. those sides and ready to roll. I mean, seriously, would your husband not die? And you can do this at home. You'd be dead. I'd be to have to step over his <laughs> dead body. He died in shock, and I'm like, excuse me. Well, I made Hold two on, steaks, but now steak. you died in shock. So I'll have to eat both steaks myself. Or one degree. Okay, there we go. Go, 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 go. Okay, now where do I put it, though? All right, we're going to put it back on our induction. 
Okay. Oh, jeez. It's, it's okay. I would be like, it's dead. Be careful. I died Wait, let's focus. Holy focus. Crap. Deep breath. And we're going to focus. Oh, jeez. This is terrifying. Ah! Shoot. That one's on you. Okay. <laughs> Where do I put it? <laughs> right there. It looks incredible. Please, I would you just look at that? It's absolutely beautiful. Remember that time you burned me with the thermometer? No, I don't. It's a Savannah, hot pan. I don't remember that. So where do I put these? I should take them off yes, the hot take pan. take it off the hot pan. These look delicious. And then let me grab our sprouts. Yeah. And we'll scrape them on. And then this one is going to be done. We'll grab our vegetables. OK. Is it okay that they've just been sitting on those? They haven't like continued to burn or anything. No, yeah, not at all. Not at all. We'll just kind of add those to this. Teamwork makes the dream work. That's it. So now let's grab our beautiful skirt steak. Mm. It's been resting. Yeah. So now all of the juices have reabsorbed into the fibers. Let's move this here. We can still use those. Should tongs. I serve it or no? Should I we're put gonna it on the cut cutter? it. We're oh, gonna okay. thinly slice it. And this, without a doubt, is probably one of the most important things. We are going to cut this across the grain. So do you see these long these long fibers that are yes. going this way? Yeah, I guess. All right, so if we were to cut it with those. Yeah, I would have followed then, the line. I mean, if we did this, it is going to be so tough in your mouth, you're not going to be able to chew it. Wow. So then we will cut this way. And you want to kind of do it on the bias. So just a little bit of a um, angle. Okay. Okay. All right. Now I know you can do this. Very no, okay, nice. Yoda. Very nice. There is no try. There is only do. But says look, Yoda. and there you are. I do. I mean, figure that out. Like, this is just have, wonderful. But isn't that funny that like someone figured out at some point that we need to go across the yeah. grain, and now you know what they're talking so this about. This is this, and now I'll go like this. Perfect. Right? Across the grain. And that is going to make sure that every single bite mm -hmm. is so tender and so delicious and so flavorful. Mm -hmm. You're not even going to believe it. It's taking all of my self-control not to just start eating this. <laughs> Always remember, though, Savannah, that since you're the chef, mm -hmm. you get to have the chef special. What's that? You know, which is just like one little piece, like before oh. it goes. Well, mm, oh, this you got to make sure it's amazing, you know? Test? Okay, let me finish this, and I'm going to do Oh, it is, I'm sorry. I'm making you do all the work, and I'm just sitting over here enjoying oh, myself. Oh, I love it. Oh. Is it incredible. really good? Mm -hmm. It's absolutely delicious. I hate these last little bits. That's where, I, that's where it's like the risk of mm -hmm. blood is high. Okay, I'm going to take a little chef's special. But because we did that marinade, the caramelization, you know, it's got that little bit of crunch, that beautiful Real nice. depth of flavor, that little bit of sweetness. Mm. So let's add it to our tray okay. here. Tongs? What? Yeah, let's okay. do tongs. Tongs are going to be perfect. Best steak I ever made. Only steak I ever made, but... Is yeah. it really? Mm -hmm. You should be very, very proud of yourself. Is, I mean, is this it? Is it dinner this served? This is it, honey. I mean, we can go ahead and take this over to the table. Okay, yay. And I'll grab these beautiful steaks. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't get any better. Oh Absolutely gosh. does not get any better. It looks 
incredible. And the margarita. But so see, you could serve this with the flour tortillas yeah. and the pico de gallo and cheese, or you could do that with the mashed potatoes and maybe some roasted carrots. Whatever your kids love, now you know how to roast every vegetable that there is. This is the first time I've made a steak and the first time I've roasted a vegetable. Cheers! Not my first margarita. <laughs> no, we let's are, do this. We're good at this. Mm -hmm. This is so fun. Okay, so what do we do? Let's do a little bit oh, yeah. of this. Come to mama. And then here we are mm -hmm. with those and beautiful roasted vegetables know, that you I love did. It. You know, it's that moment right before you cut into your steak that you kind of take that breath wondering, you know, was it yeah. was it cooked properly? Well, that's what is I, it just like I like look uh, it It's so oh. tender. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is my Christmas card. That's it. That should be absolutely I mean, this looks incredible. That doesn't get okay, any let's better. Taste it. Delicious. I mean, gotta say. I'm sorry. Mm. You killed it. So Absolutely good. killed it. It's so tender. Let me try these Brussels. And I love. Mm. Not mom's frozen. The aromatic of just that little bit of garlic and rosemary that we threw in at the last minute was beautiful. It is really delicious. Okay, now I gotta try skirt steak. Tender, not chewy, because mm -hmm. we cut it across the grain. And that's the key. I neighbor. might have added a little more salt. And that's fine. Lesson learned. So now you know. We've opened up so many possibilities to you because you saw two ways to make a steak, one with a marinade, one without, and then we know exactly how to roast vegetables. So you've got everything from roasting an onion and peppers if you wanted to make fajitas, all the way to beautiful Brussels sprouts or butternut squash. I mean, it's unbelievable what you can do now. I know. it's like, So could you? are you saying that like other cuts of steak I could prepare in the same way? Absolutely. So it doesn't matter whether it's a ribeye, or if you are doing a filet like we did today, it's the same method. It just depends on the cut of the meat. You're either gonna marinate it and have to be very careful with the way you cook it, or you're gonna go sear it on all sides and go in the oven to finish. Just so you've done it. Now I can make anything. You really can. Just, Any just, sort of protein and vegetable. I just have one final question. What is that? Is the pan hot? <laughs> Honey, that pan is hotter than the hinges of hell. <laughs> How about the streak? It's cold as ice. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Well, good morning, good morning. Welcome to The Boost. We're going to start your morning with stories that are going to brighten your mood, including a boost of girl power. But we begin with a young astrophysicist leaving her mark in a male-dominated field, making a difference in the lab and on the beach. Dylan Dreyer explains. I love feeling small. I love asking questions about our universe. She may be a tiny speck underneath the Milky Way, but Serafina El Baudry Nance has always had big dreams. I grew up in love with the night sky, and I would stargaze with my dad at night. I knew that I wanted to continue and devote the rest of my life to studying the stars in some capacity. Serafina will earn her PhD in astrophysics this year, but she says she quickly found that the path for women is still less than stellar, especially women of color. There are not a lot of women in astronomy and in physics in general, um, and that's a really difficult isolating, lonely feeling. Serafina also became an analog astronaut, living for a period of time in a Mars simulation. But she says only after learning how truly precious life on Earth is. My journey with cancer really started with my grandmother. Um, she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer and ended up dying of pancreatic cancer. And then when I was in college, my dad was diagnosed with metastatic prostate cancer. And my dad is my best friend. Um, he is my number one cheerleader. And that diagnosis was devastating. In 2017, Serafina learned she also carries the BRCA2 cancer gene. She was 23 at the time and was told to prepare for a lifetime of screening every six months. For me, that was untenable. I couldn't imagine living my life constantly reactive and scared that something would pop up. 
And so when I learned that I could get a double mastectomy, that would reduce my risk of breast cancer from 87% to less than 5%, I knew that that was the right course of action for me. Um, it really was a no-brainer. It wasn't a fear-based decision, it was an empowering decision. In 2019, Serafina had three surgeries to complete a double mastectomy with breast reconstruction, and she was ready for a new challenge as a Sports Illustrated swimsuit model. I think that the stereotypes of what a scientist looks like and what a body in Sports Illustrated swimsuit looks like is embedded in, in my mind, right? In everybody's minds. Serafina says she took the leap and applied for a spot in the magazine to reclaim her post-mastectomy body. It was recognizing in myself, I can do this. And to my utter surprise, I got a call that I was selected. And the entire time that I was there was so empowering. I got to embrace my body in a way that I hadn't gotten to um, post-surgery. She writes about her journey in a new book, Starstruck. For me, feeling small is my way of feeling connected to the universe. So that sense of perspective really grounds me and allows me to tackle whatever life throws my way. Coming up next, our girl Bobby Thomas gets under the hood of the all-female auto mechanic shop, helping women build confidence while getting their hands a little dirty. So right now, I am clearly in my comfort zone. Uh, manicure is heaven. But you are not going to believe what Patrice is going to show us on the other side of that wall. This is Girls Auto Clinic. Established in 2017, it's a car garage where female mechanics help female car owners. One-stop shopping for all things auto repair and beauty. So this is something you actually offer. What inspired this? So I know for me, I hated going to get my oil changed. It was never something I looked forward to because I was gonna be like hit on. It was an <laughs> uncomfortable lounge, right? And they had bad coffee and car magazines. So I wanted to create an experience that women looked forward to so they would get their oil changed. Patrice Banks is teaching women to become she canics. I can't get enough of that word. What is a she canic? So a she canic is what I call my car savvy ladies. It's not actually a woman mechanic. What I do with Girls Auto Clinic is I teach women like how to take care of their cars, what to do in an emergency, right? How to talk to a mechanic. Her goal is to empower women through their cars. Yeah. Can you tell me about your relationship with cars growing up. And we actually didn't even have a car. Um, I was poor. We w used to take the bus or we'd have to walk. When I turned 16, I couldn't wait to get my own car. It meant freedom. I was the first person to have a driver's license in my house. Patrice became an engineer, but quickly realized there was a gap in the automobile industry. Women outnumber men as both drivers and customers, but often feel intimidated when it comes to auto repair. I didn't know how to take care of my car. Um, I always thought I needed a guy to help me. I'd panic anytime a light would come on. So she went back to school to learn about cars. I'm 31 years old and I'm in class with a bunch of 18 year old boys. And I tell people all the time, I was scared. I was intimidated. I'd never touched a tool in my life. Slowly, she gained more confidence and began to disrupt the auto repair industry in heels. She creates the world that she wishes she had and that what she wishes she had, she pours into this universe. It was time for me to step out of my comfort zone. I have no idea where Hi. I should stand, what I should do, <laughs> but I feel so comfortable because I'm next to you. The most important thing that you need to know with your car is having what I call a PCT, or your primary care technician. Now, I'm sure you have a PCP, right? Your primary care physician. I know I go to the same doctor, the same OBGYN every year, but I often shop hop or what I call cheat on my mechanic. And that is really can be really detrimental because that's when you're more likely to be taken advantage of and be overcharged. So let's get another hood here. Okay. All right, this is an important one. It's called your brake fluid. And it's always located right behind your steering wheel, right here under the hood. Look at the color of your brake fluid. It's kind of like a white wine color, right? Okay. That's when it's fresh and new. When it gets dirty and brown is usually when you need it replaced. When it looks like Chardonnay, yeah. you're in good shape. Yes. I was already feeling more car savvy and ready to get my hands dirty with an oil change. Lubrication is very important and an oil change is what, $75? But a new engine will cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. Wow. Your oil change is usually
usually around 5,000 miles. I'm gonna have you lift it up by pushing this button here. The Ooh, car's gonna go up. So now I feel like my son is gonna be jealous. <laughs> He'll be like, yeah. Mom, you got to do that. <laughs> and we want to remove this plug because it's going to drain out of here. So this is a tool called a ratchet that you're using right now. Yeah, I will. Pull it, put some muscle in there. Got it. There you go. I'm going to get this oil caddy and right, right under, under the plug we just loosened. And then as soon as you feel it loose, like pull your hand back. There you go. All right. As See, you, yep, you got a little, got a little grease on there. It looks <gasps> good. I just changed the oil on this car. It's very like this moisturizing. Now to a story of transformation through triathlon training. It's a special program building confidence in young girls. Once again, here's Dylan. Try make a circle. On Foster Memorial Beach in Sag Harbor, New York, change is happening. And I want to see your best power pose. Middle school girls are feeling invincible, led by their very own okay. superwoman, Teresa Roden, on. fueling young girls' confidence through triathlon training with iTry. Push yourself today. That's what today is about. It all started in 2005. Teresa had just completed her first triathlon. I was never an athlete. I was last pick for every kickball game my entire elementary school career. When I first decided to do this race, I quickly realized that I couldn't continue to talk, have that internal dialogue that I had my entire life, that voice inside of me that said, you can't do this, you're too slow. With several triathlons under her belt, she looked at her middle school daughter and had a thought. We could empower girls at this age and give them all of the tools and the training and the love and support necessary to do a really big goal like doing a triathlon, it can change everything. The iTry program is now in more than 12 nearby public schools, offered free of charge. Starting in February, Teresa and her coaches train girls to be ready for their first youth triathlon in July. 11 to 14 year olds swimming 300 yards, biking six miles and running one and a half miles. When we empower them at that middle school age, 11, 12, 13, where they're so open to learning, we teach them that you can be, do or have anything that you set your mind to. But this goes deeper than athleticism. The girls also train their minds through after school empowerment sessions. We do lessons on things like affirmations and visualization and how to appreciate yourself and love yourself. We do a lesson on real beauty where we, we hand out geodes and they get to see that beauty is from the inside out. For 11-year-old Amina, I try has shown her she can achieve more than she ever thought possible. At first, I didn't want to do it at all. I wanted to quit because who would want to do something like that willingfully? She came into the program not knowing how to ride a bike. I thought that biking just wasn't possible for me. I thought that my brain didn't work that way, but now that I can actually do it I, and I've reached all of those limits that I used to have, I'm so extremely proud of myself and now I know that I can reach any limit that I push myself to. For 11-year-old Tiffany, the choice to join iTry was simple. She wanted to do it for herself. When I wasn't in this program, I was lame, boring, always liked to play around. But when I got in this program, I stopped doing those things. I worked hard and to stand up for myself. Tiffany's already doing it. I feel like Superwoman, Wonder Woman. The program has had more than a thousand girls complete a triathlon. Some of the alumni even return as coaches, like Sofia Rodriguez, now a junior in high school. I feel like if I just give them little tips and let them know that I was in the same boat as them. I try, it's a little cheesy, but it's like a sisterhood because we're all together, we're all working towards the same goal. Team on three. One, two, three, team. Now in its 12th year, Teresa reflects on the success of the past while looking to the future. In this moment in time that we're living right now, especially for women and girls, there is not a better moment to be empowering young women who will be the future. They are our future.
Welcome back to The Boost. Meet the music trailblazer shaking up the future of the business with a blast from the past. Vinyl. Dylan shares her story. Vinyl Records is so special because to make the choice to own a record, to spend money on it, to pass it down from generation to generation signals that you have some kind of emotional connection with it in a way that you don't with streaming. Karen Kelleher has always had an ear for music. My mom loved Broadway musicals. My dad would take me on long car rides and play his favorite classic rock albums. And my sister's a trained opera singer. Karen also brought a fresh eye to the music industry. After an internship at Paste Magazine, Karen got her MBA at Harvard Business School and was eventually recruited to launch Google Music, now known as Google Play. I was giving a big corporate presentation about the state of the music industry, and I shared that for the average American band to make minimum wage each month, they can either sell 100 vinyl records, have over a quarter million digital streams, or 2.2 million video views. And I know a lot of artists that can sell 100 vinyl records to fans at shows, but very few that can achieve 2.2 million YouTube views on a monthly basis. And that's when I thought, wow, vinyl really is a critical part of this new music economy. The thought struck a chord with Karen, so she quit her job to figure it out. The dream I kept coming back to was this vinyl record pressing plant. I started learning about the vinyl process. I learned just how much can go wrong, but also how little innovation had been in the industry since the 1970s. There's a lot of science and engineering goes into it. Karen set her sights on making the process more accessible and affordable for independent or up-and-coming artists. And with a small business loan, she decided to call her new venture Gold Rush Vinyl. I was living in San Francisco at the time, and was really inspired by the pioneering spirit of that town all the way back to the 1800s. Like, that's musicians today. They are pioneers going across the country in tour bands, chasing gold, so to speak. Gold Rush Vinyl opened its doors in Austin, Texas in 2018, completely disrupting the record pressing process. Their turnaround is three times faster than the industry standard. Plus, there are no minimum order quantities, making it easier for smaller musicians to afford records to sell to fans. When you think about how vinyl immediately being sold to a fan at a show puts money in the pocket of the artist so that they can get a hotel, get gasoline to drive to the next city. It feels very real in a way that when I worked in digital, I couldn't see how that all connected. On top of that, Karen and her team found a solution to one of vinyl's biggest problems, sustainability, creating floral bouquets made of scraps that couldn't be recycled. Today, Gold Rush Vinyl is not only facing the music, but meeting the moment. My fascination with why people have turned back to vinyl keeps coming around to the commemorative nature of a vinyl record. And that led us in a series of crazy COVID serendipitous things to have a machine now that can make 24 karat gold and platinum records. About five to 10% of all project requests we get are from people that want to make a wedding vinyl or a mixtape for their loved ones. And those are the creative things I get really excited about and that my team luckily come with me on when I have these big ideas, but celebrating those musical moments in your life. Up next, Jesse Kerr shares the powerful story behind musical instruments that came through the darkness of the Holocaust to become symbols of hope. No matter what we take from this melody, with every note from these strings, we hear the music of survival. Rita. Avshi. Rita Ganinskaya and Avshalom Weinstein are living proof. Before this moment, they'd never met. At 95, Rita is roughly 50 years Avshalom's senior. But in April, just outside Chicago, in a way, they reunited. Rita, a Holocaust survivor, remembers fleeing a Polish ghetto by tunnel to escape the Nazis during World War II. We were digging with spoons, sometimes with sticks, with whatever we could have. Along with her mother and sisters, Rita then hid in a forest in Belarus with resistance fighters who helped save roughly 1,200 Jews. The group was led by a set of brothers, including a man named Asoil Bielski. Avshalom tells us Asoil Bielski was his grandfather, one he never met. Rita lost more than 100 family members in the ghetto, in the camp, but herself, her two sisters, and her mom survived the camp. It's all because of Belsky. The remarkable meeting between Rita and Avshalom made possible by Violins of Hope. 
Weinstein's family collection of more than 100 string instruments, which he says includes many once owned by those who perished in the Holocaust and those who survived. The collection now spending six months around Chicago at a crucial time. Record levels of anti-Semitism, rising hate, and it's really what we would consider hands-on experiential education. It's about the human story. We're told this violin and its owner survived two concentration camps. There is hope and there is a lot of loss and there's a lot of history and there's a lot of beauty at the same time. The Violins of Hope Project says a man threw this violin from a cattle car pleading to passersby, take my violin so it may live. We don't know what happened to that man, but his violin's still here. The violin here. is still here, yeah. La door by door, even without him, from generation to generation. Other instruments are dedicated to Holocaust victims. Is this project your way of honoring your grandfather? It's a way of honoring him, and it's a way of making, trying to make sure people will never forget, and hoping people will learn and it will never happen again. These were six million people. They were people. These were real people who had hopes and dreams, and they were killed just because they were Jewish. A Jewish memorial, but also a message of survival, seen, felt, and heard. Boost. Did you know that chess is one of the hottest games around right now? Well, Jacob Soboroff shows us how a new generation is discovering its joys and introduces us to some of the fresh faces now mastering the classic game. When the lunch bell rings at Culver High School, the games begin. Chess, that is. Dozens of students cramming around boards in Craig Wisner's ceramics classroom, ready to face off. The Culver High School Chess Club has skyrocketed in popularity, doubling in size this year to 80 members. From the pandemic, like we had to find new ways to play with each other. When school came back, the chess club wanted, people wanted to play over the board now. An explosion of interest in a game that was once anything but cool. You moved the piece. I did not move the piece, I adjusted the piece. Deadly serious. Check. And sometimes deadly slow. My social security will expire, you'll still be sitting there. But I learned quickly that this isn't your grandpa's chess club. Oh, snap. And I needed a little help plotting my next move. D2. 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 
Somebody talk to me. <laughs> if you think that going on national television is nerve wracking, try playing chess against a 16 year old who's playing since he was in kindergarten. The chess craze is happening not just in classrooms and living rooms, but on virtual chess boards as online gaming takes over. The number of daily visitors to the website chess.com soared when the COVID 19 pandemic began. Start your clock. Later in 2020, Netflix's The Queen's Gambit told the story of an orphaned chess prodigy and became a runaway hit. We thought that was going to be the peak of chess, and it turns out it wasn't. In 2023, an even bigger wave of interest in online chess, from 5.5 million daily users last November to more than 12 million today. The Chess.com app became the number one most downloaded game in Apple's store in February, thanks in part to some newly famous faces drawing in new players like Alexandra and Andrea Botez, sisters who grew up competing in in-person tournaments, now two of the most popular chess streamers thanks to that pandemic surge. I had played chess all my life, and this was the first time ever it was becoming more mainstream popular. They've racked up over a million YouTube subscribers and as many more on the streaming platform Twitch, where they broadcast their games live for hours a day. The beat's just too good. When I'm winning at chess, it is the best feeling. But of course, when you lose, let's not talk about that one. <laughs> Chess.com CEO Eric Allbest says it's been a deliberate gambit to change our idea of who can play chess. His answer, anyone. We all lose our queens. We all play bad chess. But that's just part of the game. Allbest says they're seeing growing numbers of women picking up chess. And the Botez sisters say they hope to inspire more. At Culver High, still a boys club on the day we visited, they're hoping to keep bringing in new players. They built a strong community and anyone is welcome at the board, says their advisor, Craig Wisner. I've seen a lot of kids that came in here quite quiet quite isolated, quite shy, that form a lot of really powerful friendships and relationships with the other kids in the club. Speaking of chess, a school custodian is winning across the board by teaching students how to succeed at the game and in life. Kristen Dahlgren has that story. At the end of the school day in Hampton, Maine, custodian David Bishop puts down his mom. That was key right there. Was... And starts teaching these kids to clean up the competition. Meet this year's Maine elementary and middle school state chess champions, coached by none other than their school janitor. Well, it's kind of cool that a janitor has a whole different life. It sounds like something straight out of the Queen's Gambit. It's called chess. Will you teach me? For Bishop, yes, that is his real name. None of this was expected. You can't take this because yeah, it's no. pinned. When he so. found himself out of a job after a career in telecommunications, a friend hired him as a custodian. Then he happened upon the school's chess club. And I asked permission to join and just to help the kids. Now the team is stronger than ever. With top 15 finishes at nationals. But Bishop isn't done. You have that twinkle in your eye. What's the goal here? <laughs> well, uh, win the nationals. We can do it. I think we can. What's the most important lesson he's ever taught you? Can you find a good move, make a better one? I think that can translate even to life. Sometimes you find exactly what you need. I'm grateful that uh, no company wanted to hire me for a telecommunications job. Thank you for that, companies. In the most unlikely places. Kristen Dahlgren, NBC News, Hampton, Maine.
the boost. We've got one more video and it will make you smile. Check it out. A young boy wanted nothing more than to one day have a baby brother or sister. So when the day came, his mom was going to surprise him with the good news. So she gave him a t-shirt, asked him to close his eyes, and it read, Big Brother Finally. Here's his reaction when he opened his eyes. Big Brother Finally? <laughs> 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 Yeah, you're gonna be a brother. Look, mommy's brother is being big. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> this one might win the boosties. So sweet. That's a good one. Oh my gosh. Mm. Wow. Oh, he'd been waiting and mm. hoping for that for oh. a really, really, really long time. Can you uh, imagine what kind of big brother this kid's gonna be? Yeah. All right, that's all we have for the boost. We hope that we were able to start your day with a little upbeat positivity. We're going to do it again tomorrow with more of the boost right here on Today All Day. Hey there, welcome to another episode of Start Today. You know, we've got more than 130,000 members in our Facebook group, and they're full of individuals just like you who motivate and support one another. And one of the most amazing things is how willing all of us are willing to share our personal stories. Never too late to join this movement. Just scan the QR code and become a part of the 430,000 folks who subscribe to our newsletter and get the jumpstart you need to improve your health. On this special episode, we're going to highlight some members from our community and see those health transformations firsthand. So let's get to it. This is Start Today. Let's begin with three women who formed an incredible bond thanks to our Start Today Facebook group. Christy Pham, Pam Dorsey, and Doreen Fox each joined our community with the same goal, to work towards a healthier lifestyle. But what they didn't expect? a lifelong friendship. They have cheered each other on from a distance and finally got the chance to meet in person. Here's a look at their story and the moment they met for the first time. I don't even refer to them as my Start Today friends anymore. These are just my friends. They've made me so much better. We can tell each other our secrets and we know they're not going to go anywhere. What's unique about this friendship? Well, for one thing, Christy Pham, Pam Dorsey, and Doreen Fox live hundreds of miles away from each other. The other thing? Well, they've never met, at least not in person, that is. They each joined our Start Today Facebook group last summer, looking to make a change in their lives. I knew that I wanted to be a happier, healthier Pam. A massive transformation that started with just one little walk out my door. I'm more positive about myself. After connecting through the comments section in the group, they have come to lean on each other while carving their own special niche like Pam's daily posts of encouragement. Pam is the, the sunshine rock star of the group. Happy dance, happy dance. She sings her messages. It just lights up your day. When Pam took a break from social media during a bout with COVID, Christy stepped up and sent one of her infamous care packages. I call it my happy mail, because when I see it, I, I was like, okay, Christy sent me some happy mail. If I'm having a bad day, she gets a card right out to me. And when a caring voice is needed, that's the call to Doreen. Doreen is an incredible friend. She probably is the reason why I was able to change my life because she saw me when I couldn't see myself. That is how she motivates and inspires. From strangers to a circle of friends, this Start Today group now coming together for the first time in Studio 1A. We told each other no mascara that day because we're tears are gonna be crying. That is so oh beautiful. Oh my gosh. So, so Christy, we've made you guys wait in separate places. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Yes. Pam, Doreen, come on in. Here there's they come. There's one coming from one direction. All right. Okay. And there's okay, another coming there's from Pam another direction. Over here. Christy! Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. oh my God. Wait, we have a come on in. We have another. We have another. One more. Oh, oh there's oh. another. I don't want to intrude. Okay. Oh, Wait, do 
we need uh, you to sit. Okay, here, come, come on over here. Come sit. Let me, yeah. let me oh, scoot over. Okay. Here. This is amazing. Oh, my God. Like the, separated. This we is separated. Am- no, we now. won't separate you anymore. This is it. <laughs> oh, so my goodness. What are you thinking? What does oh it feel like to be goodness. together Uh-oh. together oh for the first time? We feel like family already. Oh my but to see them in person and to be able to touch. Oh, my God. <laughs> You've kept us apart. Words, Tell me cry. something. Where do the tears come from? You guys come from different parts of the country. You just met over, you know, walking. Yes. Where are the tears from? Our hearts. <laughs> um, yes. Great, wonderful people. Where we've come from, what we struggled through, and where we are now. Thanks to the Start Today program. Yes. What has it meant to, to be part of this group? I mean, you guys obviously have formed this bond, but it's such a bigger group. I go on, I'm scrolling, I'm seeing these these messages and this encouragement. Pam, I've, Sorry, I've watched you. Uh, 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 when you po- when you commented on my video the first time, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Uncle Al knows me. I'm famous. <laughs> He mentioned my dogs, and the other day, Patricia mentioned me, and he had my pictures up there. My husband and I were watching him, like, oh my gosh, the lives that we've changed just by posting our positive attitudes with each other. It's everything. And you guys have done it. That's the amazing thing. That's amazing. amazing. Uh, amazing. uh, You know, uh, uh, I think we want to make this morning even better. You know, we want to bring in another Start Today member you might recognize, our our leader, Stephanie Monson. Stephanie, come on in. Steph, do you want to say anything to these women? You know, I am so incredibly proud of all all three of you. And not only for transforming your lives, but you have encouraged thousands of other members, other Today Show viewers, to encourage and and change their own lives. And as your trainer and coach, that's like the best thing I could ever ask for. Not only are you making the change for yourself, but once you take that time and put yourself first, you have that ripple effect. I'm so excited to meet you in person. I got to tell you, that was amazing. And it's always great seeing our Start Today group bringing folks together. Well, up next, we've got an inspiring woman who took charge of her life after an unexpected wake-up call. Plus, another community member who embarked on her own health journey. And she's going to share some great advice how we can all do it, too. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Start Today. We're continuing to highlight folks who have made incredible transformations and taken control of their health. Monica Poole joined our community after an unexpected wake-up call about her health. From that point, she committed to a better lifestyle. Everything changed when she shifted her approach to food and fitness by taking small steps to improve her health. Monica recently stopped by Studio 1A to share her progress with us. But first, here's a look at her journey journey kicked off in January of 2022. The catalyst was when my brother needed a kidney donor and my health prevented me from being a candidate. I was overweight, I had high cholesterol, and I was pre-diabetic. I decided to meet with a nutritionist who suggested the Mediterranean diet might be a sustainable lifestyle change for me. I had been a yo-yo dieter for most of my life, 
In addition to changing my eating habits and tracking my food for mindful eating, I started walking approximately 7,000 steps throughout the day. I lost 20 pounds by the summer of 2022, but then my weight plateaued. That's when Start Today became part of my journey, giving me the community I needed to keep going. I keep moving all day with additional walking, weightlifting, and my latest endeavor, yoga. Start Today helped me lose an additional 40 pounds. I'm full of energy and I'm more productive at work. When I was overweight, I wanted to fade into the background. Now I want to be seen. All right, right, well, let's see. Monica is here with us this morning. Monica, come on out. All right. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. We're so happy for you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you so much. I gotta give you a hug. Oh, please, absolutely. <laughs> Come on I'm in, bring you in. forever. Oh, thank you, thank <laughs> you. Let's see, make ourselves at home. Yeah, thank for, you so, so much. So first of all, before we, we, we get into your story, how's your brother doing? Well, um, he's still waiting. He's on the kidney list. Mm-hmm. He's O positive. So if you don't, if you know anything about kidney, kidney mm-hmm. donors, that's the longest list. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he, his name's Zach Douglas, and I am you know, we're just all just waiting. Mm-hmm. Just waiting. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. And, yeah. And did you reach your goal of, of getting healthy enough to become an, uh, a kidney donor? I did. Um, I worked with um, Cleveland Clinic Florida okay. and they were excellent as far as educating me on what I needed to do to be healthy as a kidney donor, mm-hmm. as well as um, staying healthy for the rest of my life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was really the aha moment because with yo-yo dieting i was always focused on just losing the weight and um cleveland clinic florida really just drilled it in that this is a lifetime commitment but unfortunately they found an underlying health issue i had that i wasn't even aware of Hmm. so i was denied well but on the upside you know but it changed my life so it's kind of ironic that i started this journey to give to others and he, you know, the, the journey actually gave to me yeah. and changed my life. That's great. What do you think were the, the biggest reasons that you, you struggled before this, this journey? I, I really think it was um, a perspective. I was like, oh, you know, I, I just have to lose the weight. It's all about the diet. It's all about the scale. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and this round, I was like, no, it's all about, it's all within my control. Right. <laughs> um, they recommended the Mediterranean diet, which I found to be very easy to follow. Mm -hmm. Um, I also tracked what I ate, so it was mindful eating. Um, And I took steps, I had this goal, but I focused on the daily steps Mm -hmm. that um, that actually um, made the difference. So now it's not about the scale, it just magic happens. When you focus on what you can do every Mm -hmm. day that's within your control, the magic happens and it's still happening. So we're coming up on vacation season, spring break, then summer vacations. So how do you maintain, you know, this, the regimen that you have now when you're traveling, when you're, you know, do you have cheat days? I mean, how do you make it work? Well, it's, it's hard when you travel, but I just went on a cruise with my family, uh, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and we just kept walking in the morning. Mm -hmm. And start today is actually really inspirational because every day you see people walking Mm -hmm. and um, I'm happy to report I didn't gain a single pound back. Wow. Wow. On a cruise? That's a feat. That's amazing. (laughs) That's a feat. And um, I mean, I didn't, I wasn't perfect, but that's the other thing. This is a lifestyle. Still vacation too. You want to enjoy your life. Right. And and really quickly, Monica, because a lot of folks, it's, it's taking that first, it's starting today what what you, for folks who are trying to think they're just so overwhelmed mm-hmm. what's your one takeaway focus on what you can do today have a goal an eating goal and a moving goal um, for the eating goal focus on fruits and vegetables mm-hmm. get more in your diet um, for the moving goal just start moving and when I first started I would take 10 minutes here mm-hmm. 10 minutes there yeah. I would break it up through the day I mean now I, I walk an hour and a half every yeah. morning and it's nothing um, but it took me a year to get sure. there. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, and you um, did get there. That's the, yeah. that's that's the, the takeaway. Thing. And this past weekend, we walked 20 miles here in New oh York City. Oh, my wow. goodness. Good <laughs> for you. Well, Monica, thank you. You're an inspiration. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Right. We are so proud of Monica. Her story is a great example of how you take those small steps, end up with a big impact. Well, coming up, a community member who's changing her life one step at a time. 
and then later, how a second chance at life shifted a woman's perspective on health and fitness. We'll be right back. We're back with more Start Today. Last year, Detricia Woods Meadows set a big goal for herself, walking 10,000 steps every day. And like many of us, that pandemic, well, it flipped her daily walks to work upside down. Then knee surgery set her back even further. But she was inspired to take charge of her health after she came across our Start Today Facebook group. Well, since then, Detricia has transformed her life and even reversed her pre-diabetes. Check out her story and the tips she shared on the third hour to help others kickstart their own journeys. Years I made excuses about why working out wasn't for me. By 2022, I was out of shape at my highest weight ever and in pain from arthritis and a torn meniscus. Plus, once the pandemic hit, my walks at work turned into me sitting at home. I knew I needed to make a change, but I never felt motivated enough to do it on my own. So I called my cousin Anthony and we decided we'd hold each other accountable to walk every day, sending our step counts back and forth to motivate each other. A few months later, I came across a Today Show story about Doreen Fox who lost weight by walking around inside her house. I was walking around my house too. I read that Doreen was part of the Start Today community, so I figured I'd give the group a try myself. As I continue to focus on improving my health, I scheduled a routine physical with my doctor where I found that I was pre-diabetic. I was scared to tears and I knew that letting myself go further was not an option. I immediately bumped up my step goal to 10,000 steps a day and I aim to increase my goal by 500 to 1,000 steps each month. At home, I focused on portion control and I increased my water intake. My work had only begun, and I was excited to see where the journey would take me. All right, well, that is Detricia's story, That's but so we good. have her here with us this morning. Detricia, come, come on, on out. out. Hey! All Hello. right! Oh, my okay. Come this way, around this way. Yeah, we'll go around this way. Yes. Wow. Hello, it's so nice to meet you. It's so nice to meet you. <laughs> come, come. Ooh. Congratulations. Yay, no, don't yeah. cry. Don't cry. No, or or oh, Uncle Al. Okay. I like that. I mean, tears are okay. <laughs> yes. My gosh. Yes. So, Detricia, this is what a great transformation. What a wonderful story. And, and I think like a lot of us, you know, there are different reasons for you taking that first step, no pun intended. So, so what was it for you? Well, for me, it was, um, I just recently learned that 
two people that I, I knew growing up had passed away, mm. and one was uh, complications of diabetes, the other one was heart disease. Mm. And we were the same age, oh. and I'm like, I don't want to have RIP next to my name oh, right. at 50 years old, you know. And then my mom, who's 70, she was walking, uh, just walking me out the box, right? <laughs> and I'm like, my mom, 70 years old, and she's walking better than me. Oh. So I, I got on the phone, like I said, with my cousin, and we talked about it. And I'm just like, he's like, what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. I said, I got to get this weight off. I know what I need to do, but I can't, I don't have the motivation to do it. But we just jumped out there and we started doing it. We set our goals and mm -hmm. I haven't stopped since. Today is 280 for me. Oh my good, 200. Wow. In 80 days of walking. Wow. Way to go. Patricia, you look absolutely beautiful. Thank you. So a lot of us But you've got a glow, And you too. do. You Thank really you. do. So a lot of people watching and a lot of us and somebody sitting in the seat, you, st <laughs> you start and you're doing well, right? But how do you keep it going? I mean, 280 days, sometimes it's hard for a couple of weeks. It, it is hard sometimes. Sometimes it's like, I don't want to do it, but then I, ha I have to remember my why. Your why. Why am I doing this? I'm doing this for me. I'm taking care of me. Nobody else is going to do this mm -hmm. but me. So that's, I, I just make myself get, whether I feel good or not, whether I'm hurting or not, I get up and I move every so day. So where are you on your journey now? Are you still... You know, do you still have goals that you're, you're trying mm -hmm. to reach? I'm, st I'm trying to get to Wonderland, as the Start Today <laughs> family calls it. I, um, What's so Wonderland? Getting into the 100 pounds. Mm -hmm. oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, the 100 pounds range. Right now, I'm sitting at 209, so I've lost 65 pounds mm -hmm. as today. Um, and wow. I, I have about 20 pounds to go until okay. I reach my, my first goal. Mm -hmm. So... And I'll keep pushing. Well, wow. Patricia, we are just rooting you on. Thank I mean, you. congratulations. It takes a lot of hard work, but you made that what first step. And look Thank at you, you now. Thank you. Any tips? It up? Any tips you want to offer to people at home as far as getting started? Um, my first tip is to see your doctor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk it over Absolutely. with your doctor. Even walking can cause hip issues mm -hmm. or what yeah. have you. But Go talk to your doctor first. Schedule that physical so that they can see if any underlying mm -hmm. issues are going on. And then make small, realistic goals. Yeah. You don't right. want to say, oh, I want to do 10,000 steps, and then you discourage yourself right. by exactly. not doing as much. So start off with small goals. Um, and just be kind to yourself. Yeah. Wow. The Stephanie Mansour calls, calls in say. sick. You can fill in for <laughs> yes, your motivation. You're very motivational. Thank, Thank you so Thank much. You. That was just incredible. She really believed in herself, and we are still cheering her on. Just ahead, how a heart transplant gave one Start Today community member a second chance at life. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Start Today. This next community member can walk for miles. Now that's impressive enough, but it's been less than five years since her heart transplant surgery. Kathy Augustine is one of the 130,000 folks in our Start Today community. She visited Studio 1A back in February to tell us about her remarkable journey. And then join me and Today Fitness contributor Stephanie Mansour for a heart healthy workout. 
I was 27 years old and teaching kindergarten when I got sick with what I thought was a bad cold. It went on for weeks and I continued to get weaker. My mother insisted I get a chest x-ray. That's when the doctors discovered I had cardiomyopathy, a disease that changes the way the heart functions. I was rushed to the hospital for emergency open heart surgery five years ago. And then my heart stopped. After being revived, I lived with a heart pumping device called an LVAD for six months. Then I received a life-saving heart transplant. I had to learn how to walk again and use walking as a means to recover. My favorite place to walk is at Universal Studios. I joined the Start Today Walking Challenge last June because of its inspiring community. We're here at Universal Orlando. And in November of last year, I was able to be one of the walkers. Here we go! Alongside Al Roker and Stephanie Mansour at Universal. Since my surgery, I've lost 120 pounds and walked to 5K for Donate Life. I continue to walk to keep my heart strong. Now, let's, let's meet her. Kathy Augustine, come on out. Good to see you. Oh, my gosh. That's fantastic, Kathy. Nice to see you. And, of course, look at that. That Woo! is crazy. What a, what a transformation. Well, we've got Stephanie Monsour, our Today Fitness contributor here. Kath, come on over. Uh, good morning to both of you. It is so good to see you. So first of all, how are you feeling? How are you doing with your new heart? I feel great. Every yeah. day's a new day. And, yeah. and now there was a point, I understand, you had to relearn how to walk. How, how difficult was that? I literally could not, like I was in the hospital for two months and mm -hmm. I couldn't um, stand, I couldn't walk. I had to go to rehab and physically learn how to get up and walk, move my feet and I just had to do that after my LVAD surgery. How, how important was that for, for your heart health, your, it was, your recovery? It was crucial because of, I needed to get walking and get active and my heart needed to get healthy. Mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned our, our Start Today Walking Club became part of your life. Yes, I joined in June of 2022 and um, I've just been a member and I've seen all the motivational stories and everything. Um, Stephanie's been motivational, you've been motivational on your videos um, everything is just great because of every day there's new posts about how much people have walked or how much uh -huh. things people have been motivated so 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 Steph you know we, we think about you know it's Valentine's Day in, in yes. February heart and emotion but uh, it's also about health that's right you know a lot of people think about cardio exercise when it comes to their heart health and that is extremely important we've got our walking challenge uh -huh. you know but in addition for this month for heart healthy month we are focusing on strength training and that's because research actually shows when you combine cardio with strength training, uh -huh. you get more benefits for your heart than if you were just to do cardio exercise. And that's because we know building lean muscle mass helps us to speed up the metabolism, right. burn more calories, and therefore help us maintain a healthy weight. All right, so you talk about upper body exercise. Yes, so we're going to start off with some upper body exercises. Okay. So we're going to grab these dumbbells. I All recommend right. starting kind of light, mm -hmm. three pounds, um, and then go up from there. Okay. So what we're going to do first is the W exercise. Okay. So I really want you to connect emotion this month ah. our heart healthy month feel like a winner as Ooh. you open to that w and then bring it back down we're opening wide on this diagonal and then coming down to the shoulders abs pull in mm -hmm. feel that kathy yep. yeah working the upper body and the shoulders and then the next upper body exercise is a v for victory okay. so i want you to feel victorious as you do your workout if you're sitting at home wondering oh gosh i don't know if i can do these with mm -hmm. the weights that's okay put the weights down and just right. do this for some shoulder mobility and, and how many uh, reps or do you do? 10 repetitions okay. and then we move on to the next exercise. Okay. Next exercise? Yep. Now I'm going to show us goddess pose. So oh. we're all going to unleash that inner goddess here. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> even you, Al. Yeah. <laughs> so opening wide into a wide leg open toe squat. We're going to lower down, abs in tight, knees out to the sides, and then stand up, squeeze the glutes at the top. Good. So we lower down. That inner goddess is unleashing here. Stand up uh -huh. and working the quads, this the hip flexors, okay. <laughs> and even the hamstrings. Now, the next exercise is a warrior two. So, Kathy, obviously, you are such a warrior. Al, you've been through so much. You're a warrior as well. What I want you to do is open the legs here into a warrior two position. Good. Knee over the ankle. Good. Turn. Yes, exactly. Al, perfect. Abs in. We bend the knee over the ankle, and then we press to stand up. So, this is a dynamic yoga pose, actually, uh -huh. that we turn into a strength training exercise. So, if you're at home wondering, okay, how can I unleash my inner warrior? Maybe right. you've been through some health issues. Maybe you're just having a hard time getting started this year. Scan that QR code on your screen. Join our Start Today community.
community. People like Kathy, myself, yep. you, Al, we're motivating you every step of the way. Kathy, Steph, thank you so much. Big thank you to our community members for sharing their stories with us. We hope it's inspiring you to embrace your own health journey. And don't forget, our online community is growing by the day. Scan that QR code to sign up for a daily dose of information and motivation in our Start Today newsletter and connect with other folks on the same mission to get healthy. And that wraps up this episode of Start Today. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Today All Day. Join Hoda Kotb for season three of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Open your eyes, you get to decide. How's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. Over the years, I've been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. We had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Oh, Again, I almost got out of this one clean. <laughs> Turn it down. Oh, my God. I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. But I'm hoping to put that all behind me. Today, cookbook author and Southern Comfort Food Extraordinaire, hostess with the mostess, Elizabeth High School, is here to teach me the basics of how to cook. She's going to be my guide as I attempt to make steak two ways. First, marinated skirt steak with roasted pepper and onions, and then a steakhouse style filet mignon with roasted Brussels sprouts. I've been waiting a long time to use that cast iron pan. Frankly, I've been avoiding it, but no more. So let's get started. We meet again. I know, I'm so excited. You are my Obi-Wan This my is Luke it. Skywalker. This is it, honey. I promise we're going to make it happen. And I mean, honestly, who does not love a perfectly cooked steak? I love a steak. Everybody does. And I swear, I swear, it's so much easier than you could ever imagine, okay? This is our plan. Marinate the skirt steak, cut and prep the vegetables, grill the skirt steak, sear, baste, and finish the filet mignon, let the meat rest, cut and serve. All right, so here is our marinated skirt steak. Go ahead and get this out. Do I just go to the butcher and say, I want skirt steak? Exactly. They won't laugh at me. No, let's unfold him. Why do we call it skirt steak? It's just that cut of meat. It goes actually at, under the abdomen. That oh, is yes, exactly like, where it, it goes. Like it fits you, oh, right, the waist. Now, okay. Yes, if you have a piece of meat that is as big as your waist, yes. you're going to want to cut it. Yes. Okay? So we're going to cut this into four pieces so that we can manage it in our, um, in our skillet. Now, okay? is this one of those against the grain things? Not right now. After we cook it, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay. But right now, I just need you to cut this into cut four pieces. Okay, I got it. Yep, yeah. Nice, long, good. Very, look at you. Oh, I think I'm, look, we get some skills. We're just going to measure out all of our ingredients for our marinade okay. and put them right in the bag. Cheers. I mean, seriously, it's Wednesday. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Only on days that end with Y. <laughs> Those are the only days I drink. Okay, let's go. One quarter cup packed light brown sugar. This I know how to do because of baking. Now, and remember this. Yes, open this up. This is kind of interesting. So we put a little piece of bread in here. Why? Uh, well, because it's going to keep the brown sugar from getting hard. This is very soft brown I'm sugar. I'm telling you, that's because of the bread. Roll it in there. Let's okay. do our soy. Two tablespoons soy sauce. One tablespoon, One tablespoon of balsamic. Very good. One can chipotle in adobo well, sauce. First, it's tomatoes, onion, garlic is oh. making the sauce. It's earthy, it's smoky, and it's going to add another depth of flavor to this marinade. So let's chop this up. Okay. We want to chop Are it up. Are we chopping up all the No, all uh, No, that would set us all on fire. And so we want it to be, you're good. Okay. Yep. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And then once you kind of get through, mm -hmm. 
It's real juicy. Then you can always go back over it. Yeah, like I would just, my instinct would be to kind of like do this thing. Uh, very nice. Yes, look, that, see? Did you just see that? Instinct. Instinct. You're getting it, you're getting okay. it. So because it's a little bit of a tougher piece of meat, mm -hmm. that's why we're gonna marinate this. Now okay. listen, you can do this for eight hours. We would love 24 hours. You mean marinating? Exactly. So, I mean, if you ran home and, you know, even if you only had an hour, you know, that's gonna be good. First, we wanna pull that. all of this air out of this. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's one of my favorite parts. I don't know you why do. I, why I love loving that. I love I you. Love <laughs> Skirt shake, I love you. And so then what we'll do is massage it. Do you feel like this is I do. fully coated? I think coated you've done an absolutely and beautiful job with that. And then yes, that is gonna go into the fridge to marinate. And so we'll okay. just put it back here. All right. So now we finished our marinade and we're gonna start our roasted vegetables. Okay. And I have got something that is going to change your life when it comes to this. Tell me. So this is, it has all the vegetables that you might wanna roast and then the different times. And you don't have to have a recipe. This is gonna be so freeing for you, honestly. So we're gonna start with our Brussels sprouts. I'm gonna show you and then you're gonna finish. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna cut the end off of it and then we're gonna cut it in half and okay. it's gonna go into our bowl. Okay. Okay. What about frozen? Uh, Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Well, th what happened? That's is, how we did in the '70s in my mom's well, kitchen. Well, and, and that is why we didn't like them. Oh, I hated them. They were just when I was a little kid to put one bite of a Brussels sprout oh, in my mouth there was, was oh god, it was close hell on to earth. torture as you could hell imagine. On earth. If you roast them though, it's a whole new world. And then here we are again. You've got those done. Those All are right. beautiful. Set them over here. And that's what we're going to pair with that filet mignon. Okay. And now we're going to move on to our peppers. And so what I like to do is cut it in half. Go ahead and cut it straight just in like half. That. Uh huh. Being very careful to see where you're. Beautiful. And then I just pull this right out. Oh. And then we're going to make nice long slices. You want to keep it even. That's one of the main secrets about roasting vegetables mm -hmm. is that they all need to cook and get finished at the same time. What about these white bits? Like so I used those, to cut those out. And sometimes. you can, you can. I want to show you something. Mm -hmm. So if you will hold your knife here, mm -hmm. it's going to give you a lot more security mm -hmm. and I think you're going to be more comfortable with it. I like your grip. The grip is better. It's so much better because you have more control. And when you have more control of your knife, you're more comfortable. All right, so now we're going to get to our Onions. Oh, onions. How are we doing it though? Dice? Now, we're going to do just like a rainbow. So just a half moon. So we're going to cut it in half. Okay. Both ends off and then keep going. So what we're going to do, we're going to roast all of our vegetables on separate pans because again, well, that sounds like a pain. Well, it is, but it's really going to make that much of a difference. When you're only using a few ingredients mm -hmm. and salt and pepper, the technique is so important in making this successful. Okay, okay? I would have thrown so them all I the know, same hand, I know you would have. Who cares? And some of them would have burned, and okay. some of them would have been raw, and then you would have been frustrated and said, "I don't know how to roast vegetables." Yeah. Okay, so it's technique. Yeah. You're getting very good with your knife, and I'm proud of you. Well, thank you. I'm working on it, but I do have to be reminded about where to hold it, to grip it. It's like a bat when you when you when you choke up on the bat. Or your tennis racket. You know yeah, this. I do. If you held your tennis racket with your finger hanging out like that, you wouldn't be worth a damn. Mm -mm. Okay. I'm so. still not worth a damn. <laughs> <laughs> Just FYI, but you, I take point taken. Point taken. So now I want you to generously olive oil these. Yeah, there, there we go. Okay. Beautifully coated. Mm -hmm. Good. And that's gonna help to ensure that this is gonna caramelize. We want it to get that beautiful brown color. Now I can't see, stop. See, I, I know, it's kind of fun, yeah. isn't it? Now we're gonna salt, salt it generously. We're gonna pepper it generously. Now do I need to like sprinkle then toss or just sprinkle, throw it all in there? Sprinkle. Too much? That's, that's a it. lot. That's gonna be done. Okay, okay, that's all you need and then we'll toss it. It kind of helps if you want to, you know, go ahead and go in the circle so you're not just dumping it oh, in the middle. Okay. That will kind of help it just okay. a little bit. I would say less pepper than salt, no? And, and that's the great news. It's yours. Okay. So do whatever you want. This recipe is not the boss of you. Yeah. You are the boss of it, okay? Right. Take that recipe. <laughs> I'm not going right, to take it anymore from you. Mix. Now, and also at home, listen, if you don't want to pull out three different sheet pans. I don't own three different sheet well, pans. Well, that's the deal. Okay, I get that. You can always separate it. Okay. So you could do Brussels sprouts here, onions here. So let's okay. throw the onions on one. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, okay, pan. it doesn't uh -huh. have to share. Okay. Yes. It says don't crowd the pan. Correct. We keep, do not want to crowd it. These want to keep their social distance. Mm -hmm. Let's flip these little guys over oh. because the more surface area that's on the bottom of this pan, okay. the more beautiful they're going to be. Mm. All right, and now we have one more. Spread that out. And why out. are we doing three pans again? 
Because they're all going to cook at different times. Oh, okay. Okay? And Thanks. if we otherwise, the Brussels sprouts are going to be raw, these are going to be overdone, and yeah. the onions are going to be burnt. And we cannot have that. No. And so now we'll go in the oven with these. Why don't we put peppers and onions on top, and then we will do our sprouts on the bottom. Okay. Well, that was easy enough. There we go. Mm -hmm. Ooh, now. Out. So what we'll do is we're going to let that cook for a little bit, okay. and then what we want to do is we'll want to rotate the pan. Like just move them around. Exactly. But do I have to flip them? I could get obsessed about flipping each other. You could, over. but you don't need to. Okay. okay. Very nice. That's good. Okay. All right. So now, our vegetables are roasting in the oven. You just gave them a nice toss, so we're gonna leave those alone for a minute, and we are gonna get ready to cook that beautiful skirt steak. Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead and grab that. It's 24 hours it's been marinating. So, now, what we're gonna do is pull it out. We're gonna put it on this paper towel. What will happen when we get ready to cook this? Our amazing. pan is going to be as hot as the hinges of hell. Do you understand me? Okay. And if this marinade is still on here. Like that was trippy. No, you're good. Okay. We're going to pat it. I mean, we're about to get serious with this. Okay. Because it will end up just steaming it and almost boiling it. Oh. And that's not what we want. We want that beautiful caramelized crust. So we are really going to get all the moisture out of it. Okay. So we are going to press on this. We're soaking it up. Now let's come over here. I want you to. Let me ask a question. Is yes. this pan hot? Hot as the hinges of hell, honey. It is hot. Do not touch it. Brush it with um, the canola oil, okay. and that will help it not stick. When we did that marinade, you have to remember that we added a little bit of sugar. We've also got balsamic that has mm -hmm. sugar in it. It's going to smoke a little bit, okay? It's smoking now. It, yes, because it, it's hot. So let's turn our vent on, which is that little button right over there, and that's gonna pull the smoke up. Okay, that vent's over there. How's that gonna help? It will. Okay. All right, let's okay. put that down. Doesn't matter which side? No, just put it down. Woo! Very good. So, but this little bit of smoke, it's gonna be so worth it, I promise. Let me get the grandma timer, grandma timer. Grandma, grandma alert. And um, so literally, it's just gonna take three minutes on both sides. Okay. Why do we use um, a cast iron pan? Why couldn't I just use a skillet? Oh, honey, because cast iron holds the heat. It cooks so evenly. It really is just the absolute best way when you're getting ready to cook a steak. Now, so, is it hot? It's hot as the hinges of hell. Just kidding. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's You're sticky. Okay. It's, it's broken. No, it's I burned not. It. No, the reason that it's sticky is we had a little bit of sugar in the marinade. But look at that. It's beautiful. Okay. I got to tell you, I would have said that's burnt. No, it's caramelized. That is absolutely gorgeous. Oh God, I need the jaws of life Calm to down. get this Deep thing up. Deep breath, deep breath. You're good. There you are. Oh boy. Oh look boy. Look at those beautiful marks. I You're mean, killing it. Pretty. It smells good, but see, this is where I would have felt like I did it wrong. Absolutely not. Okay. That's what you want. That's that wonderful crisp, right. caramelized. Mm. Oh, let's get on there. That's the heaven. I mean, come on. You got it. You got it. There you go. The stubborn Excellent. one. Okay, three minutes, said Grandma. Beautiful. Three minutes on the other beautiful, side. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes. 
I think we're right there. We're about there. Just pull it off. Good. Look excellent, at that. Excellent, it excellent. doesn't matter what size. Look at how beautiful that is. I must say it is. Let's put it over there and let it rest. Okay. Rest for 10 minutes. Be careful, that pan's hot. I know. The pan is hot. Wait, I'm sorry, is the pan hot? <laughs> let me turn this off. Now it's not hot. veggies out of the All oven right. before I burn them. Ooh. Oh, they look good. I See? think they do. And now we've got our onions mm -hmm. and then our peppers. Should those have been browner or does that look good to I you? I think that's nice. Okay. I think that's really good. We're going to use these for fajitas after mm -hmm. we slice that skirt steak up and then the Brussels sprouts we will have this that with our fajitas. beautiful filet. This mignon. is a fajita seed. You are absolutely right. All right, so now we have our vegetables out and we're ready to go with the, the, the filet mignon. Oh. We have two beautiful fillets. They're yes. so cute. Aren't they lovely? There's two beautiful. One, one for, for me, you. one for you. One for me, exactly. Um, so, salt and pepper generously. If you don't season it well now, you literally have missed the boat. Sure. You said generous. Generously. Uh-huh. Sides? Absolutely. If you're going to eat the sides, you want it to be seasoned, right? Okay. Just there. Good. Very nice. Let's do that on both fillets. And then we'll do the same thing with the pepper. Do you know if I served filet mignon to my husband? Oh, he'd lose his mind. I was going to say he'd have a heart attack, not because of the red meat, <laughs> but because I had actually I'm telling you, cooked something. No, He'll just be like, where's and Savannah I love, go? I love how you just did that. That was a oh. pro thing. Ooh, dang that it. was pro. You know what? I don't like things to go to waste. And there you are. OK, how do you think? Good? It's perfect. Okay. Absolutely great, perfect. Great, great. I want you to go ahead and at least smash your garlic. And let's go ahead and pull our rosemary off. Use the side of this. Hold on. Let's like do this? one clove at a time. Oh. And let's turn the knife away from us. Okay? Oh, okay. Good. And then, but I'm gonna smash and then it. you're going to use Should your Should I hand. cut these tips off before or no? Oh, no. It ain't going to do a damn thing. It ain't going to do anything. Okay. Perfect. Good. Now, is that smashed enough? Well, I mean, I, I would have put a little I mean, more effort into it. I mean, that doesn't seem that more Let's do it. Come on. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Very That's nice. Good, That's good, but there's still it. big old. Well, if you want to okay. cut it up, you can. Well, it's do. not necessary. It's says smash. I want to be smashed. Okay, smash it. Smash it, smash and it. Not smash it. And not just with the margarita. And not just with the margaritas. And That's then we, smashed enough, you're saying. You're beautiful. Okay. It's just it's just a quick, easy, okay. you know, it's just a throw in, just okay. a little flavor. Okay. And then we have our rosemary. Please, from one sprig, is this the pull off deal? Ah. Uh, you is taught me it, that before. Is it, is it? it? I think it is. Okay. So we'll start at the top and then you're going to pull back. Good. And now you can do it. And doesn't that make it so much easier? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, and then just pick off the little ones on the end. Mm -hmm. okay. I enjoy brushing oil. Now, before we go, we're already starting to smoke. Let's get that vent on, okay? Oh, good let's vent. turn the vent on. Hey. Okay. Whew. So, should we go for it? We're ready. Let's do it. Okay. All right, so here we are. Oh, and hear that? 
So that's nice. That sizzle was ready. How long does it take? I think it's probably going to take about, you know, two to three minutes. We just want to get that beautiful caramelization. We want to lock in all of those juices. This is about like the crust, basically. Very much so. Should I be doing something with this butter to get ready for this whole scene? Well, I mean, you could go ahead and cut it. You think that's three tablespoons? No, that's not. Like there. Right there. That's right. I and a little that from more bacon. isn't going to hurt this. Correct. And just know, Savannah, that smoke is normal. All right. All right. Oh, that's nice. That's very, very good. Isn't that? And now we want to go side, side, side. Okay, so that's how it should look. I love it. I love it. All right, so now this seems side. like a tricky little thing here. Why? Is You've it three got it. Okay, is it three minutes on each side? Do you want to go ahead and go ahead and do oh, the yes, other one too? Yeah. Beautiful. Are you just not concerned about my steak, Savannah? As long as yours is what perfect. Okay, yeah. Does so each, let's do a flip. Does each side, like, oh, jeez. Oh, boy. You oh, can boy. do it. We, mm. Let it go. go. All right, and then your guy goes over. <laughs> I swear it is just like Mr. Miyagi and the Karate Kid. <laughs> I'm so proud. It really is. I'm so proud. Look at Elizabeth. You. But Savannah. I mean, that was beautiful the way you just flipped oh, that. Thank you. You're getting this. There's nothing like low expectations, Elizabeth. <laughs> this is fun. All right, let's get that that side right there. You're getting this the bottom, right? Uh, we're still doing sides, and yeah, then we're side, gonna get, sides. Okay. And I still have this too. One more little side there. Very this nice. one doesn't have another side, interestingly. Okay, so then we have the bottom. <laughs> like some people. Oh. But wait, now should we do the other, this is still a rare side. And should so I do now that? we'll put that one down. Get and on while down. that one's working, mm -hmm. then we're going to do our little pan sauce. Okay. So we'll add our butter. And I'm just throwing <laughs> it in there. Yeah, throw that in. Fun. And then you can kind of hold the pan with the towel, okay? Be very careful. Mm, and no. now let's add our garlic and our rosemary. Now look how it looks like it's burning. I'm it's sorry. It's not. It's just, okay. it's not. Just it's throw this all in. Throw it in. Just sprinkle it around. Very good. And then we have this spoon and we're going to just baste it. Be real careful of that So what's basting? Just pan. spooning it on? Uh-huh. Just fill up a nice big spoon and pour it over. Mm. Oh, look at you. Talk to me. Okay, that's it. Come Keep on. going. Is it already like the leaves and the bits are there? Uh huh. Now is it Very bad that nice. I just moved it? It's perfectly fine. Okay. Look at that. I mean, that looks like that's it. Come to mind. That is a tell. That's it. I need that's it right now. That's what you're just looking like for. That. Keep basting. Uh huh. And now we're getting ready. One more baste. When we put our thermometer in, you want to be really careful that we go right into the middle of this steak, okay? okay. If you go all the way to the bottom, it's going to give us a false read. It'll be too okay. hot. Oh. So just stick it in. Let's go all the way to the middle. Right now, we're at 74 degrees on okay. this thermometer. I want to go like in the middle. Uh-huh. Are you in the middle? I feel like I am. Okay, good. So this is going to be a team effort. Look at how it's coming up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold this. You're going to put one hand here and one pen there. Yeah. And then we're going to take it to the oven. Oh, but we didn't check the other one. Do you what? want me to take this out? No, no, no. It's fine. They're the same size. They're okay. going to cook just about the same. Do you want me to take this out now? No, it's going to go into the oven with the thermometer. It's an oven read. Isn't that go fancy? Into the oven? Well, this is going to stay out. That's going to stay in. Whoa, and okay. we're going to do this together. How we... Now Which the oven's at? hot. Go on in. So if you were at home by yourself, yeah. yay, you would wait and you would put your, you would put your thermometer in now and then um, you would shut it. And look at it here. Look at it there. Wow! Isn't that fun? And then we could even turn on an oven light if we want to look at it in here. So we want to get up to about, well, 127. Okay. Because once it comes out, the temperature's going to raise a few more degrees. Okay. 130 is going to be a perfect medium rare. Okay. So we'll just sit here and let this so you come do 127 up. figuring it's going to continue to cook when it's out on the... Correct. It's, How long in the oven is that's it really? why I mean, it's like, what, four minutes, yeah. three minutes? So it's quick. Okay. It is quick, and, so, and that is the thing that's a little unnerving because mm -hmm. it's not hard, it's just fast. You just got to be so ready to roll. So those sides and ready to roll. I mean, seriously, would your husband not die? And you can do this at home. You'd be dead. I'd be, have to step over his dead body. <laughs> He died in shock, and I'm like, excuse me. Well, I made Hold two steaks, but now steak. you died in shock. So I'll have to eat both steaks myself. Or one degree. Okay, there we go, 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 go. Okay, now where do I put it, though? All right, we're going to put it back on our induction. Okay? Oh, jeez. I would right. be like, it's dead. Be I died Wait, here. Let's focus, focus, Holy deep breath. breath, and we're going to focus. Oh, jeez. This is terrifying. Ah! Shoot. That one's on you. Okay. <laughs> where do I put it? <laughs> right there. It looks incredible. Please, I have, would if, you just look at that? 
It's absolutely beautiful. Remember that time you burned me with the thermometer? No, I don't. It's a Savannah, hot pan. I don't remember that. So where do I put these? I should take them off yes, the hot take pan. take it off the hot pan. These look delicious. And then let me grab our sprouts. Yeah. And we'll scrape them on. And then this one is going to be done. We'll grab our vegetables. Okay. Is it okay that they've just been sitting on those? They haven't like continued to burn or anything? No, yeah, not at all. Burned. Not at all. We'll just kind of add those to this. Teamwork makes the dream work. That's it. So now let's grab our beautiful skirt steak. Mm. It's been resting. Yeah. So now all of the juices have reabsorbed into the fibers. Let's move this here. We can still use those. Should tongs. I serve it or no? Should I we're going to cut it. Oh, we're going to okay. thinly slice it. And this, without a doubt, is probably one of the most important things. We are going to cut this across the grain. So do you see these long, these long fibers that are yes. going this way? Yeah, all right. So if we were to cut it with those, yeah, I would have followed then, the line. I mean, if we did this. It is going to be so tough in your mouth, you're not going to be able to chew it. Wow. So then we will cut this way. And you want to kind of do it on the bias. So just a little bit of a um, angle. Okay? Okay. All right, now I know you can do this. Very no, okay, nice. Yoda. Very nice. There is no try, there is only do. Says but look, Yoda. and there you are. I do. I mean, figure that out. This like, is just have, wonderful. But isn't it funny that like someone figured out at some point that we need to go across the yeah. grain, and now you know what they're talking so this about. This is this, and now I'll go like this. Perfect right? across the grain, and that is going to make sure that every single bite mm -hmm. is so tender and so delicious and so flavorful. Mm -hmm. You're not even going to believe it. It's taking all of my self control not to just start eating this. <laughs> Always remember though, Savannah, that since you're the chef, mm -hmm. you get to have the chef special. What's that? You know, which is just like one little piece, like before oh. it goes. Well, and mm, oh, this you gotta make sure it's amazing. Taste you know? Test? Okay, let me finish this, and I'm gonna do. Oh, that. is I'm sorry, I'm making you do all the work, and I'm just sitting over here enjoying oh, myself. Oh, I love it. Oh, is incredible. it really good? Mm -hmm. It's absolutely delicious. I hate these last little bits. That's where it, that's where it's like the risk of mm -hmm. blood is high. Okay, I'm gonna take a little chef's special. But because we did that marinade, the caramelization, you know, it's got that little bit of crunch, that beautiful Real nice. depth of flavor, that little bit of sweetness. Mm. So let's add it to our tray okay. here. Tongs? What? Yeah, let's okay. do tongs. Tongs are going to be perfect. Best steak I ever made. Only steak I ever made. But is yeah. it really? Mm -hmm. You should be very, very proud of yourself. Is, I mean, is this it? Is it dinner this served? This is it, honey. I mean, we can go ahead and take this over to the table. Okay, yay. And I'll grab these beautiful steaks. doesn't get any better. Oh Absolutely gosh. does oh not get any better. It looks incredible. And the margarita. But so see, you could serve this with the flour tortillas yeah. and the pico de gallo and cheese, or you could do that with the mashed potatoes and maybe some roasted carrots. Whatever your kids love, now you know how to roast every vegetable that there is. This is the first time I've made a steak and the first time I've roasted a vegetable. She Not my first margarita. <laughs> no. We Let's are, do this. We're good at this. Mm -hmm. 
This is so fun. Okay, so what do we do? Let's do a little bit okay. of this. Come to mama. And then here we are mm -hmm. with those and beautiful roasted vegetables know, that you I love did. It. You know, it's that moment right before you cut into your steak that you kind of take that breath wondering, you know, was it yeah. was it cooked properly? Well, that's what is I, it just like I like look uh, it It's so oh. tender. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is my Christmas card. That's it. That should be absolutely I mean, this looks incredible. That doesn't get okay, any let's better. Taste it. Delicious. I'm not a I'm sorry. Mm. You killed it. So Absolutely good. killed it. It's so tender. Let me try these Brussels. And I love. Mm. Not mom's frozen. The aromatic of just that little bit of garlic and rosemary that we threw in at the last minute was beautiful. It is really delicious. Okay, now I gotta try skirt steak. Tender, not chewy, because mm -hmm. we cut it across the grain. And that's the key. I might have added a little more salt. And that's fine. Lesson learned. So now you know. We've opened up so many possibilities to you because you saw two ways to make a steak, one with a marinade, one without, and then we know exactly how to roast vegetables. So you've got everything from roasting an onion and peppers if you wanted to make fajitas, all the way to beautiful Brussels sprouts or butternut squash. I mean, it's unbelievable what you can do now. I know, it's like, so could you, are you saying that like other cuts of steak I could prepare in the same way? Absolutely, so it doesn't matter whether it's a ribeye, or if you are doing a filet like we did today, it's the same method. It just depends on the cut of the meat. You're either going to marinate it and have to be very careful with the way you cook it, or you're going to go sear it on all sides and go in the oven to finish. Just so you've done it. Now I can make anything. You really can. Just, Any just, sort of protein and vegetable. I just have one final question. What is that? Is the pan hot? <laughs> Honey, that pan is hotter than the hinges of hell. <laughs> How about the streak? It's cold as ice. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to another fabulous day here on The Boost. We've got a a fun show for you today. A little bit later, Harry Smith pays a visit to a famed restaurant featured on South Park and now owned by the show's creators. First up, the family who went viral for re-wearing their wedding dresses to dinner. Hoda sat down with them to hear why they decided to put their gowns to good use. Terry, her four daughters, two daughters-in-law, they went viral for a girls' night out on the town and guess what they did? They just dressed in white. More than five million people watched that on Instagram. There were captions that read in part, uh, we decided that the most expensive dresses we own deserve to be worn and enjoyed for more than just one day in our lives. And they decided to wear their dresses yet again, right here in Studio 1A. Terry, Madeline, Alexis, Annalise, Kate, <laughs> Hannah Joy, and Sydney. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. You started the thing. Okay. <laughs> Take us back to the beginning of this decision. So you guys always do a monthly uh, dinner, the all the girls yeah. in the family. It's the goal to do it monthly. Which yes. is cool for you. So then how did this idea to come up come up to like, why don't we just wear our wedding dresses? I think Hannah Joy found a reel. Yeah. Yes. And sent it to our daughter's chat. Okay. And everyone was like, yes. <laughs> do it. So we should do it. And someone said at our next sister date. And that was next week. And we're like, it was okay. Like three days. <laughs> so yeah, okay. We all found our wedding dresses, pulled them out, and <laughs> first tried of to all, fit them. <laughs> how awesome that first of all you you still had all your wedding dresses. Most I lost of you, mine, yeah. Terry, yours got <laughs> lost somewhere in the sauce, but you showed up for dinner. Yes. So the reaction must have been super crazy. Tell me what happened in the restaurant, Terry. <laughs> well, I mean, everyone, what, what's going on? Did y'all just get married? Why do you have babies? Where are your husbands? I mean, like the questions were endless. Can we take a picture so with you? Funny. Come on. Yeah, like we had. Yes. Did you guys think? Um, Alexis, that this would start some crazy viral movement because what happened was I can't believe the number of hits you guys got on this. Yeah. Honestly, yep. I kind of did. I told did? my husband, he's like making dinner, and I'm like, you just watch. This is going to go viral. Yeah, yeah. He was like, it better because you're not helping me make dinner. I was like, okay. All right. Where were, Alexis, when you, uh, you, or Madeline, yes. sorry, Madeline, when you found your wedding dress, um, what did it feel like putting it back on? Because now many of you have children. You've kind of gone to a different phase in life. It was weird. Definitely <laughs> strange putting it on after eight years married and three children. But I felt really beautiful and happy. <laughs> By the way, you have beautiful babies. There are three of them that are just out in the hall. We what, think so, too. What did your husbands think overall of this idea that you guys were going to come out here and do this? 
Yeah, he, I mean, it was fun. Like, well, Gray buttoned me in. <laughs> Which you is in. like the opposite of your wedding night, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay. You know what I love about your family? First of all, the fact that you did this is amazing and insane. And I think it's going to be duplicated because the point is, is we do wear wedding dresses one time and then it goes in a box and locked up. Why are Does we doing sense? that? I don't know. I mean, there, yeah, there's a million reasons we should wear it and celebrate a lot. But what I love about what you do, Terry, is how many children do you have? Eleven. Okay. Yeah. I heard gasps and people <laughs> fainted. You have eleven children. I do. Once a week, you have a family dinner. Correct. Tell me about, because your family's close and doing this cool thing, not because it was a one-off. Okay. It's because you guys spend time together. We Tell do like about together. that. Um, well, we just... We are our support group, mm -hmm. so we come together once a week, and I'm not cooking for them. I mean, sometimes they ha bring things, and sometimes I cook. You know, it just alternates as far as the food goes. But the main point is that we are in community with each it, it, with each other. I yeah. can't talk, and um, we just want our kids and my grandkids to grow up together. Th so. This is so inspiring. Will y'all just give me a little description of your mom? Who wants to give a little description? Yes. Ambitious. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. She's a peacemaker. Yeah. She's a peacemaker? She's very intentional. She's intentional. She's very so fun. I don't know. Well, She's so always weird. so fun. She's God. young and beautiful. It's supposed to be about yeah. me. But yeah. 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 it is fun yeah. about you. But you guys, what a beautiful thing you did. I think you started a trend. And not only that, you have great timing. You're here on the Nile Horn Day. Right? I mean, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Do you all want to go out and see the concert? Yeah. 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 Who has yeah. girls in their wedding dress? Yeah. Yeah. Nile's going to think you're looking at him. Uh, you guys, thank you. Thank so, you. so much. We appreciate you. you. You're a it's great so mom, Thank uh, you, Terry. Thank I you. want you to write a parenting book. But that'll, come, that'll, that'll come later. Well, now we turn to another viral moment. A young man who's wiser than his years, gaining a following for his very mature morning routine. He joined today along with his parents who are teaching him life lessons that we can all learn from. Six-year-old Ion Jump wakes up before his siblings. You know why? <laughs> he wants to enjoy his lemon and honey tea. He wants to read his chapter book. His mom just posted a video. It happens all the time. That video went viral, got nearly three million views and counting. Oh my gosh, one comment said he looks like he's got himself a healthy 401k. <laughs> Another asking, can he be my life coach? Well, yes he can, because Ion is here along with his parents, Alyssa and Alpha. Hi good guys, morning. good morning. Good morning. Hi Ion, how are you? I'm good. You are? Now tell us about your morning routine. Why do you like to take some time to calm down, read, and have your tea? Well, I like to enjoy myself because sometimes when I wake up, and I go to school, I don't have enough time. So that's why I, my mom said that if I finish my morning routine quickly, then I can do a quiet activity. Well, that is so wise, not only of your mommy, but for yes. you to take that advice. I know you have, uh, you got a brother and sister at mm -hmm. home, so it's probably loud once they get up. So you need a little time to yourself. Quiet time. What do you do during your quiet time? What does it feel like? When, when I have my quiet time, I can read a book, drink my tea, or I can play with a toy or any other quiet activity. Okay, okay, talk to them. We're in love you, I am, by the way. If my kids what's are watching, here. you're grounded um, forever. Okay, I mean, Alyssa and yeah. Alpha, yeah. this extraordinary child. Yes. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Extraordinary parents uh -huh. as well. Thank How did you. you do this? We would like a step-by-step -step guide. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I do not have a step-by-step -step guide. But you know, we started um, with reading to Ion really early, mm -hmm. really from the womb. You know, mm -hmm. we've been reading to him, and we it was a uh, an act something that we did at night. Every night we read to him. Um, and so he's just grown to have a love for reading. You know, he looks forward to getting books as a gift. Mm -hmm. He's asking for different books. We introduce him to um, different types of stories and. As far as the tea, that's really dad. Dad drinks yeah. tea. <laughs> so I grew so. up on, uh, I come from a Caribbean household, so I grew up on tea um, every day. And of course, Ion sees me, you know, drinking my tea in the morning. So 
one day we just introduced tea. Um, he has his own tea. It's special. It's lemon, honey, and water. Uh -huh. It's not, you know, regular tea. So he has his special tea. Well, what's interesting about this is a lot of our kids do like to read, but we can't get them to be calm yes. like this in the morning. <laughs> I think this is his nature, you think though. Are you just a calm kind of kid? Yes. You are? For the most part, yeah. Because I mean, he's still a kid. He's still a kid. <laughs> right. But I remember back when we first met Ion, mm -hmm. and he was talking about affirmations. Yeah. And that was something that caught fire. What were the three affirmations he said? You I'm said? smart. I am blessed. I can do anything. You are smart. <laughs> you are blessed. You can do anything. Do, was this something that you just sort of repeated to yes. him? Yes. And then did you actually see it? Manifesting. Yes, him. yes. I taught it to him when he was two. Um, I just yeah. wanted to. Oh, is that it playing? That's him. <laughs> we hear you. Um, yeah. I just wanted him to have something so that he could feel confident and motivated. You know, as he got older. And then the video that you are talking about is when he was three. We were walking to school and he yes. just started saying it by himself. By himself. Yeah. So I just recorded it and you know I posted it. Um, but he says it. I hear him saying it to himself. I don't have to prompt him anymore. If he's having a difficult time, he'll be like, I can do this. I can do anything. By the way, so, you wrote a children's working. book, didn't you? Yes. What's it called? Two books yeah. um, yes. with my sister. The yes. first book is called I Am Smart. I Am Blessed. I Can Do Anything. Yes. And the second book is I Am Amazing. Wow. Well, I yeah. think you guys are amazing because Thank here's, you. he's obviously an extraordinary child. And we yeah, all yeah. know if you're parents, it's like they just, they are who they are. Right. You know, <laughs> we, right. we can only do so much. Exactly. But I love that you Get, you trusted him enough mm -hmm. to give him that time to do something that is yes. quite mature. Sometimes yes. I think we underestimate mm -hmm. yes. what our kids can do. And you so have obviously, obviously set high expectations that Ion has met. Yeah. Ion is just a, you know, he's a very special kid. His name means gift from God, and he's truly oh. just been a gift um, to yeah. us since he's been here. He's just an awesome kid. He's just naturally yes. amazing. Ion, do you ever think about what you want to be when you get bigger, when you grow up? Yes, I want to be a scientist when I grow. And I have my own scientist club at school. You my do? friend Peter's the boss. <laughs> and, really? And why do you want to be a scientist? Because I'm going to make a formula that I can rub on people's heads, and that will make them never die. Until a few months, it will fade away. <laughs> Ion, I believe oh, you. Ion, I you do can too. do anything. I do. We have something special for you, Ion. Oh. Would you like to meet our friend? You might okay. remember her. Our friend Jenna is here. Do you oh, remember us? Do you remember Jenna? Hi, Ayan. It's so good to see you. Hi. He doesn't remember me, oh, but it doesn't on. matter. He was three. <laughs> Look what I have for you. Look. I know you love to wow. read. Have you ever read Dog Man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The this is for you. I love that. And have you ever read Renee Watson? <gasps> Ways to Grow Love? Oh, wow. Something tells me you would love this book. I Do you want to read it? Okay, well, all of these are for you, and this is for your tea. Oh, you have a special oh, cup. Yeah. <laughs> You're oh, welcome. All right. Oh, well, my you love you, Ion. Oh, You're amazing. High five, Ion. Thank you. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you so much. Oh, he's strong, too. <laughs> We've got a fun look at the trivia tide sweeping the nation. You don't want to miss this one. That's right after the break.
Welcome back to the Bruce. Trivia has overtaken bars all over the country, including right here in New York, as people continue to seek in-person connection and entertainment in the post-pandemic world. Joe Fryer has a little bit more on this latest trend. Ben Affleck and what other actor are both returning as the Cape Crusader in the movie The Flash? If it's Tuesday night, it's trivia night at Lexington Public on Manhattan's Upper East Side. Michael Keaton. Whoa, We've been coming here like pretty much every week. Tuesday night trivia brings me to the bar. I really love pop culture. I love geography, uh, like current events, politics, uh, and sports. Teams like this one meet up weekly for some friendly competition. It gets us out on a Tuesday night, so it's nice to have a, a routine. Owner Chloe Patelis added the trivia night as a way to draw customers to the newly opened bar. And she says it's a winning answer. Tuesday night business is up 50%. It's brought in so many people that might not have found this location. NYC Trivia League supplies bars like Lexington Public with equipment, hosts, everything they need to run their own trivia nights, besides the beers and wings. The group has seen a rush of interest post-pandemic and added 24 new trivia nights since November. We've seen more players. We've seen them coming back more often. And it's not just a New York City phenomenon. The company King Trivia runs events in about 35 states. They've gone from 200 weekly events before the pandemic to more than 300 now. More different types of venues are open to it today. So the popularity has surged. It's way higher, but it's a, it's a much more difficult landscape today than it was before. It's part of a larger trend combining eating and drinking with entertainment. More than 80% of Americans have tried it out. For customers watching their wallets, it provides added value. While bars get an influx of patrons and improve their bottom line. Before the pandemic, is a trivia night something that would have you would have even considered? I know a lot of bars did it, but that's not something that I would have considered. It's amazing. I would never go back. And if you're looking to add a dose of competition to your nights out, trivia is not the only option. Some places customers can throw an axe in between sips of beer or even play pickleball during happy hour. An event night like this, that's their personal trainer, so they have to go. They have to commit to it. Otherwise, they might have just thought, oh, I'm going to go out tonight. Uh, maybe I'll just stay in and watch TV. You're like a personal trainer. Just like a personal trainer, <laughs> yeah. And the trivia craze even took over today. Let's throw it back to last year when Hoda, Carson, and I tested our knowledge on the first seven decades of today's show history. Check it out. We're back with today's trivia special game show celebrating today's 70th anniversary. I'm your host, Al Roker. Now, let's meet our contestants from South Carolina, Craig Melvin, from West Virginia, Hoda Kotb, and from California, Carson Daly. Come on, let's go! Up to you all. Okay, here we go. First question. Which star's father created the Today Show? Was it Johnny Carson, Jimmy Fallon, what? Andy McDowell? Is this Sigourney real? Wow. I'm going to go with Sigourney Weaver. You got a buzz. I did. He did. Oh, Sigourney right. Weaver. You Sigourney. are correct. What? Sigourney oh. Weaver. Her Look at you. Yes. He created not only the Today Show, but the Tonight Show as well. Oh, wow. wow. All right. We're going to, this is an audio cue. Let's cue the music for this. Play it. Which iconic Hollywood star sang the song that became the original instrumental version of today? Carson. Judy Garland? Judy Garland. No. I'm going with Doris Day. Correct. Doris oh, Day. Hey, that's right. What a is so lucky. That's I right. am lucky. I never played pickleball. Then she rules. <laughs> Dave Garraway came up with that. All right. Here's a good one for you. This one's for you, Craig. How many U.S. presidents have been interviewed here on today? Wow. Craig. 13. You're correct. Wow. Every president since know? President Eisenhower here That's on good. today. Wow. All right, Wait, let's go now. Wow. Here comes Carson. This one's for you. All right. Our very first plaza performance was A, Billy Joel, Ooh. B, Britney Spears, C, Earth, Wind, and Fire, very D, first? Aerosmith. I'll bite. I'll take the bait. It's got to be Earth, Wind, and Fire. Absolutely correct. Go! Let's go. Oh, on the and your Wait, favorite Carson. band, too. Right. Wait, let's watch for it. Oh, let's relive. Oh, come on, Broker. Broker, was that one of your favorites? Yes, absolutely. Come on. All right. Here we go. 
lot of people have been spontaneously spotted stopping by our window, including oh. a president of the United oh, no. States. Ooh, what? Was it A, Harry Truman, B, Gerald Ford, C, Lyndon Johnson, D, Wait, we had Bill to Clinton. Stop by our window uh, in the world. Yeah. It had to be Clinton. Uh, uh, Craig, Craig, I, I'm going to go with uh, Gerald Ford. No. It's got to be Bill Clinton. No. Uh, it was Harry Truman. Absolutely correct. Wait, Harry what? Truman in 1957 oh, stopped 50. by. I was there that morning. Oh, wait, Fantastic. No. wait, can you just look at that photo <laughs> look for a second? Now that's amazing that with incredible? his hat on. Oh, that's right. They hold it on our ties. So Where's the sign? Where's the right. sign? Okay, here we go. Halloween time. Yeah. Which celebrity oh, yeah. has not been portrayed by a Today anchor on Halloween? Blake Shelton, Katy Perry. Oh gosh. Katy Perry. Perry. Absolutely no. correct. I, I got it. That's good. None of us yet. <laughs> well, you both buzzed in at the same time. Eddie has, team. Cindy has. Okay. okay. We're Wait, coming okay. up on the Olympics, right? Oh, Ready? No. We're okay, flying. Okay, here we go. In 17 days, we'll be... How many Olympics has today traveled to? Okay. He's got, I think Craig? you should complete the, complete the no. question. Okay, how many Let's Olympics... Go ahead, Craig. Go how go many ahead, Olympic Craig. Games have we go, traveled? 15. Absolutely correct. Wow. That's right. Oh, We've go. been at every Wait, Olympics can we pause since for 1992. Wow. Al, since, can we pause for a second? Yeah. What's the score? Uh, uh, I believe three, two, one. No, wait. Hold it three. Got, I, got, I got three. Two. two. No, you got two. Carson, two. All okay. right. All okay. Right. I'm not sure about that. The Today right. Plaza had a big role on a popular sitcom. Name the show. Seinfeld, Will and Grace, oh, wow. Friends. It's got to be 30 Rock. Rock. Nope. <gasps> she should lose a point. Uh, uh, Will and Grace. Will and Grace is correct. Oh, let's go. go. Oh. Take a look. We've got a little clip. Well, let's see. Will I want to see. Jack Can't was uh, uh, looking forward to finally seeing a gay oh, kiss on network yeah. TV. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right here. Another <laughs> first in today's show. That's right. He brought it here. Uh, it was based on a true story. How many times has Al Roker been on a primetime network show? Oh, about 100. 14 uh, times. All of them. Okay. okay. Last question. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's pause. Well, it's, like a, it's, it's a tiebreaker. It's like 3 3 3, maybe. Is uh, this 3 3 3, three Pete? Might be. Well, let's make it. Okay. Tiebreaker. 3 for Hoda. This last yeah, I, I Carson has three. Yeah. Craig has two. Oh, okay, okay here we go. Okay, win, here but, we go. But you can tie. Last question. Which is good. How many people have helped the weather job that I am in today? Wow. Craig? I would say only five. Wrong. Hold up. Oh, Carson buzzed in. I'm going to say six. Carson is incorrect. So now I have a choice. Kidding How me. many people have held the weather? Three. Bang! Yes! Oh, yes she yes, always yes, wins! Yes, she oh, does. Yes. That's right. Bob Ryan, Bob Ryan from WRC, oh, Willard Scott, who had been at well WRC wow, in Washington, it. and yours truly. There you go. You have know it. what, Al? Three? How, can we just three? pause for a second? How cool for you, too. I know, I One know. of I'm three. So honored. Wow. The other two are just spectacular. Wow. Unique. And I got to, got to work with Bob and, for a number of years. And I've known that. So final score, four. What, for what's Car the prize? For the prize is you get to be here for the 100th anniversary. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> You'll be on a smucker's jar. <laughs> Okay. All right. Hey, Listen. By the way, let me just say, yes. I know that Savannah hosted Jeopardy, but how about yeah. Al Roker? Oh, Roker. Yes. Al, oh, I think Roker. that's Al, your next gig. You did no, such no. a good job. Streaming is going to be calling you this afternoon. Wow, this will be a show. And you know, we did a game show on MSNBC when it first started called Remember This. It was a news game show. Oh, my and, God. Uh, you're you're pitching right you're now. About you're about to bring it back. Let's bring it back, baby. After the break, some heartfelt Harry Smith stories that you don't want to miss. Stay with us.
We are back here on the boost with one of our favorites, Harry Smith. Harry recently traveled to a famed restaurant from the long running series South Park that's sure to give patrons a taste of the cult comedy in real life. Take a look. It's big and it's pink. And for decades, Casa Bonita was Colorado's go-to pleasure palace for kids. Usually when we came here, it was a birthday. I felt exotic when I came here. It felt like I had gone away. And since those housing days, Casa Bonita has occupied an extraordinary amount of space. Wow, Casa Bonita! Woo-hoo! In the psyches of South Park creators and Colorado natives, Matt Stone and Trey Parker. Ever since we started, the building, we have named our office Casa Bonita. It's like fate. Fate would mean Casa Bonita's closing down and bankruptcy. They had to buy it. And I said, yes. And he goes, I know, but don't get to me. We don't know yet. I'm like, yes. And I was just like, we're doing that, yes. To be kind, Casa Bonita had seen better days. It was a wreck. The idea of these two guys buying it was funny, a kind of extravagant gag, or so we thought. So this is without irony then. It's not a joke, and that's the thing, is it, it, it had become a joke, and we were sad that it had become a joke, because you could see what this place was in the 70s when they built it. You know, they were trying to make a little Disneyland here. We're here! Casa Bonita! Oh, man, this is gonna be so great! 20 years ago, Parker and Stone immortalized their love for Casa Bonita in a South Park episode. I feel like Cartman a lot here, you know, just going in there, and we could do this, and we could do that, you know, we could do that. It really is. Watching, watching Trey walk around and get, had, and the, well, the, role, the emotional roller coaster of doing this, you know, he's, yeah. he's feeling it as much as, as Cartman would. You know? <laughs> this is almost like restoring an important national I, landmark. Yes. It's not that, almost. Yeah, it, it was. Is. Oh, it is. Yes, it is. And yeah. restoration is a, be, is a better word than renovation. Because right. Because it would cost way less to just rebuild this. Right. Know, make a better version of it down the road. It makes me it, wonder what that number is. It's close to infinity yeah <laughs> it approaches infinity we toured the giant restaurant slash joy factory to see what infinity dollars can create a lot of cool stuff like any construction project there was a punch list this one a bit bigger than most you can see there's some stuff they checked off and there's some stuff not checked off and yeah it's only a hundred don't worry about that we're good we're yeah. good don't worry about, don't worry about that. the cliff divers were showing off the day we were there Yes, there are cliff divers. The old 70s look of swimwear back, they made these custom for us. We always believed cliff divers performed to distract us from how bad the food was. To the rescue, a new chef, James Beard nominee, Dana Rodriguez. People mentality is like, we still have the same menu, yeah. but now it's true food. Rodriguez possesses a kind of personal superpower reflected in her sopapillas. See? Perfecto. Parker and Stone figure they'll need about six million customers a night to break even. So be reassured, they are not leaving their day jobs. So of my uh, favorite recent episodes was the one about the Canadian royalty. The prince and his wife. We want privacy. We want privacy. Yes. Right. Canadian royalty, yes. Canadian royalty. Just because I'm Canadian royalty. Right? <laughs> and that just broke through. I mean, every English person I know was ca calling me. Like, every single one. You know what I mean? And what were they saying to you? I mean, thank honestly, you. they were thank you. They were saying thank you. As much as people think that South Park, we get in a room and go, okay, who can we make angry and who can we piss off? It's not. It's how can we make people laugh? Can you do this forever? You'll find interviews of me <laughs> at, at age 30 saying, well, it's not like I'll be doing South Park when I'm 40 years old, you know? So it's like, it really is like we get back in there and we get just kind of back to our roots. It's actually, I think, honestly healthy for us now. Stick around. We've got another story that's sure to boost your day after the break.
Welcome back to The Boost. We've got one last uplifting story we just had to share with you guys. Check it out. A high school senior named Jamar got a graduation gift that he will never forget. An unexpected guest showed up to watch him get his diploma. Turn to your left. Turn to your left. Turn to your left. That is Jamar's dad. He flew in all the way from Kuwait, where he's stationed, to surprise his son on his big day. And you can see there, Jamar obviously couldn't be happier to see him. Thanks so much for joining us for another day full of feel-good energy. Can't wait to bring you more uplifting stories tomorrow, right here on Today All Day. Welcome to Try This Today. I'm Al Roker, and of course, you know, my fellow Third Hour co-hosts. Well, we're always trying something new, and we wanted to set out just to do that. Chanel taking on a dance aerobics class. Dylan Dreyer making a custom handbag. Craig Melvin trying his hand at woodworking. And all four of us checking out a boozy candle-making class. But first, I stopped by a local gem in my own neighborhood that's been part of New York City's Upper East Side for almost 100 years. I'm talking the Lexington Candy Shop, where their famous Coke float recently went viral on TikTok. And I got the chance to find out how it's made. You ready for the Coke float? I'm ready. All right, go in there. That's the Coke float place. Coke floats, Coke floats for everybody, yeah! At nearly a century old, the Lexington Candy Shop has stood at the corner of Lexington and East 83rd Street since 1925. Founded by Soterius Phyllis, a Greek immigrant, his son Pete joined the family business in 1930. Not much has changed over the years, except now people are lining up just to get in. And you'll find John behind the counter, the third generation Phyllis, who now owns the business with his partner, Bob Karcher. Your father was here, your grandfather was here. Did you think you were gonna end up running the place? I started working here when I was 14. Now it's 2023, and I'm still here. I, I like it, you know? I like the food, I like the customers, and the environment. How did it get named the Lexington Candy Shop? Because you, you don't really sell that much candy. No, but when my grandfather started in 1925, they were making candies downstairs. And a lot of the Greeks went into the candy business, and we did too, and that was it. You walk in and there are regulars. I mean, what keeps people coming here to the Lexington candy shop? The ones that come every day, we know them. We don't have Wi-Fi because we want people to talk. These days, both regulars and new customers are talking even more about the iconic luncheonette's Coke floats. I can see what everyone waits for. After popping on social media, this post alone went viral with 45 million views. Wow, beautiful. Within the hours, people were coming here. The next day went viral, and I'm a star. <laughs> we're, we're both stars right here. <laughs> John says that the luncheonette used to sell on average about 50 of these sweet treats a week. How many are you making now? A week? Probably about a thousand. Wow. I live in the neighborhood, and I'm, I'm walking around, and I see these lines. What has that been like for you guys? Besides the fact it's, it's stunning, <laughs> it's very tiring, but we like it. For two years with COVID, we were trying to get through it. Now, we got it, we're here, and we're making up for it, so to speak. We used to get one shipment of ice cream a week. Now we're getting three or four. <laughs> <laughs> I will admit, I don't think I've ever had a Coke float. Can you show me how you make a Coke float? That's what you're gonna do. We're doing it together. We're ready to go. Time to head straight to the pint for the scoop. All this right. is the way that we were doing it 100 years ago. Wow. All right, I think I remember that. First, John giving me a quick tutorial. Three, three four, four, five, five six. six. 
And you're stirring while you do it. Vanilla. Of course. <laughs> of course. And a nice little plop. Now it's my turn. I pump the Coca-Cola syrup into a glass. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then add seltzer and stir it. Oh, he's good. Look at this. Next, ice cream. Mm -hmm. Finally, I top it off with a spritz of seltzer. <laughs> That's living. Now to a place where candy and history meet, the oldest continually running candy shop in Philadelphia. I got the chance to go behind the scenes and learn another skill, how to make a chocolate bar. For over 150 years, Shane Confectionery, the country's oldest continuously operating candy store, has stood here. Established in 1863, the shop was just one of many candy businesses in Philadelphia, but none standing the test of time quite like Shane's. Has it always had the name Shane's out front? No, it was owned by Daniel S. Dangler and W.T. Westcott, both uh, confectioners in the trade. And then by 1911, Edward Shane took over and his family owned it for 99 years. Wow. So. In 2010, the Shane family sold the sweet spot to brothers Ryan and Eric Burley. Because this is kind of a turn of the century candy shop, do you always dress the parts? Wearing the bow ties also doesn't get caught in the machinery. Preserving Shane's became a labor of love for the brothers, restoring everything from the floors to the decades old candy making equipment. It was really a jewel that needed to be polished. And we were just astounded by the beauty of the place and the fact that they were still making chocolates here. Why was it important to keep the name Shane? They had been here for nearly 100 years. It didn't feel natural for us to impose our own name or some other name. How much responsibility do you feel in carrying on the tradition of this really historical name here in, in Philadelphia? I think part of uh, the, the history and calling uh, for carrying out confectionery is having roots in integrity of how they used to do it. Those candy making traditions alive and well upstairs above the shop where Shane's chocolates are handcrafted from bean to bar by a team led by head chocolate maker Kevin Pascal. Do you dream about different kinds of chocolate bars, like thinking about what's the next chocolate bar? And we get inspiration all the time from all kinds of different things. You kind of think about how you can translate these things into like a confectionery experience. So you're gonna show me how to make a bar? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Get your mold ready, okay. press the pedal, slide the mold all the way to the back, okay. let the chocolate deposit. After a few tries. This is what our finished bar looks like here. And this bar is etched in the exact same way that that chocolate maker used to make chocolate here on this block, Benjamin Jackson. And then this is the back, topped with our sea salt and our peppercorn. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's very unique. Today, the shop still an homage to the past by making clear toy candy, a rare seasonal sugary treat dating back to the 1800s. Mark, I've, I've never heard of of clear toys when it comes to candy. What is that? It's a Pennsylvania German tradition. It's uh -huh. candy statues at the end of the day. We have 1,200 molds, and they're all very, very old Victorian designs. So how do you do this? Because uh, it, it's, it's like molten sugar. So what could possibly go wrong? A lot. <laughs> In fact, weather is a huge factor when making clear toys. It needs to be cold and it needs to be dry. If it's really anything else, you get sticky product, you get cloudy product. All right, and now we wait. After about 30 minutes, time to pour some sugar. You're doing great, you're natural. But I learned quickly, this is not so easy. It's delicate sugar, it'll break in your hand. Then we crack open the molds and see my clear toy creations. I'd like to give you a hand. Maybe we'll call this one Owl Roker. Ah, well, when they made me, they broke the mold. My work here is done. Oh, that was a tasty trip. Well, coming up, Chanel meets the force of nature behind a step aerobics class that's taking Atlanta by storm. And later, Craig's first attempt at woodworking. Did that go wrong? We'll find out.
Welcome back to Try This Today. Our third hour co-host, Chanel Jones, as you know, is known for her dance moves. For her Try It Challenge, she decided to take a hip hop aerobics class that put even her dance skills to the test. One night I'm scrolling through Instagram as I do before I go to bed and I stumble across this step class and I'm like, oh, I wanna find this guy. And here I am. Just one video and I was hooked. That is EJ Houston, and every Thursday night, he turns his gym into a step aerobics dance floor. Tell me about Get Down, Stay Down. Where did this come from? The motto is you get the weight off and you keep it off with like extreme movement, having fun. I flew down to Atlanta to see it for myself, and in the process, learned that EJ has a powerful story fueling his upbeat workouts, having tragically lost his mom when he was just eight years old. When I tell somebody that, they instantly pay attention because they're going through things at home, they're going through things with their parents, going through things at work, and it's like, okay, how is this person that has all of this same stuff going on keeps leveling up? by refusing to stay down and sad. Instead, EJ focused his energy into his dreams as an athlete and ultimately a personal trainer. Your passion, your energy just, it comes across. I just met you and I feel it. My purpose is to just help people. Wanting to help more than just one person at a time, EJ made a commitment to motivate others who may be going through struggles of their own. He started teaching group step classes and knew there was only one way to get people in the door, by throwing a party. So if somebody walks into your class, what will they see? Fun, people releasing, people that may be going through pain and they're at least having a good time for that one hour. Those people make up the hundreds of folks who show up both in person and online week after week. So this series is called Try This Today. Mm -hmm. Why should someone give Step a chance? It's just a fun way to just move. And that's all that Step Aerobics is about. You can do it fancy, but if you get on it, you can just get on and off and on and off to the beat. It's actually fun. It looked fun, and I was there to learn from the man himself. But my morning TV job kept me from staying to take his nighttime class. So EJ brought together a group of his best steppers to help show me the moves. So tell me, what do you say to motivate everybody? One band, one sound. What do you mean by that? One person messed up this routine, we gotta start it over. Is he tough love? Yeah. I'm tough on everybody. He doesn't come up and give you a little hug? Oh, no. No. <laughs> All right, I'm ready to learn. All right. Okay. So the first move, okay? Okay. We're gonna say, one, two, three, four, boom, knee. One, two, three, four, boom, knee. Okay. <laughs> Second move, we're starting to the left side again. Take, Take it, it back. back. Boom, knee, knee kick, kick, knee. knee. Yeah. Now the other side. Wait, that's the most encouraging, like, whatever. Knee, kick, kick knee. knee. That's it. Clap it up. The third and final move. Step, step over, over, step, back, step, step over, boom, knee. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look, one okay. band. One sound. Yep, guess who's in the band? <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> Finally, it was time to put it all to music. Okay. You ready? Let's go. Knee, kick, step, step, over, step, back, step, over. No surprise, Chanel was incredible. Well, now it's Dylan Dreyer's turn. Learning how to make her very own bag in one afternoon, and it might inspire you to get crafting as well. As the saying goes, behind every woman is a fabulous purse. And although we all have our own baggage. That is in Dylan Dreyer's wow. bag? This bag is bad. Oh. I just had to try my hand at making handbags. This is Anthony Luciano's studio, right here in Manhattan's Garment District. Anthony has been a leather craftsman and admired accessory designer for nearly 25 years. What is it about handbags that you like? I say handbags are a piece of art with a handle. Who have we seen carrying your bags? Meryl Streep has carried something at the Oscars. Mm -hmm. Judith Light is a really 
great client. Today, he's putting me to work for one of his sip and stitch classes. So what kind of accessories will people make at a sip and stitch class? Usually we make a really simple little card case. Then we do a little simple crossbody wallet. For today, we're gonna do something special. We're gonna do this larger bag. Oh, nice. Yep. I need a new bag. Everybody needs a new bag. <laughs> cheers to a sip and then you'll teach me how to stitch? Yes, cheers okay. to that. I love, I love it. it. First, we picked out fabrics. So you're gonna to need to figure out what you'd like for the outside first. Okay. This is just like intriguing. And my grandmother is... was obsessed with roosters. Or do I go with something more practical, more every day? That yeah. matches all my outfits, but that's not fun. Okay, but right, that's a little boring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna steer you away from boring. Let's go wild, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. What kind of material do you look for for the inside of a bag for longevity? I usually use suede. It does wear really well. So these are the colors you want. A pop of color. Yeah, I think so. Beautiful wine color. This looks nice. It right. changes the whole it vibe. It changes the whole vibe. This is nice, nice too, because it does pick up some of the greens mm -hmm. here. I think I, I kind of like this wine color. I like that too. Yeah. Next, we cut each fabric into a standard purse shape. Fortunately, Anthony has a stencil for that. Very nicely done with your finger placement along oh, the edge. Oh, thank you. I feel like I'm with my son, like, stay in the lines. No. <laughs> Yay, ta -da. Then we glue the inner suede to a filler layer that will give the purse shape and add the exterior leather on top of that. But you want to be even, so not too so much, not, not too much, and not too little okay. because you want you don't want any bubbles. Mm -hmm. Take a tool like this. Mm. Just so you... that on my face in the morning. Right? It's great. I don't know what it does, but I like it. It feels good. <laughs> it feels good. When everything dries, we punch holes where the grommets and buttons will eventually go. Oh, that's easier than it. Yeah. Squeeze it in there if you can. Cool. And we edge paint so my project wouldn't fall apart at the seams. I'm pretty hot in here, so I'm gonna cool myself down. Soon, it was assembly time. So we're gonna fold these, line up all the holes. And then it just goes together just like that? No way. There you go. There you go. And then and just screw this thing, thing up. Oh my gosh, yes. We added straps for a crossbody look, and I have to say, I nailed it. <laughs> and voila, my very own one of a kind original. Look at my bag. Oh my God, look how cute that oh my is. Oh gosh, it is so adorable. <laughs> I love it so much. I also want to give you a little cherry on the cake. Ooh. And feel like no one should leave here without a tassel. This bag just keeps getting better, better and better. And better and better. Dylan, that's your bag, baby. Up next, Craig's first attempt at woodworking. And just wait till you see the finished product. Plus, all four of us get lit with a boozy candle making class. Don't go away.
We are back with Try This Today. Interestingly enough, Craig's always wanted to try woodworking, so he called on an expert to help him nail it. In my line of work, it's easy to get caught up in the hurricane disaster zone in Florida yesterday. You've got to stay plugged in to keep up to date on ever-changing events. Making time for myself can be a bit of a challenge. I do not have a lot of time uh, because of the job. I have two small children. I'd like to think I am committed to growth. I need to acquire new skills. So I decided to try woodworking. Anytime I see like something that's, that's well made out of wood, I always think, wow, it'd be cool to try to make something like that. But I needed some help. Meet Keenan Spiegel, the son of a carpenter. He grew up with hands-on knowledge on how to use tools. I spent most of my childhood around job sites, helping frame houses, um, taking home the scraps and kind of building stuff. He's got a job in finance, but his passion project is a company he started called Westport Woodworks. His garage workshop is his refuge. It's where he built elaborate play sets, like this pirate ship for his young sons. He's also volunteered his talents, constructing personalized play sets for sick children through the Make-A-Wish Foundation. In 2020, he got the idea for his next project. So I was driving with my son, my oldest son, and I was thinking, how cool would it be to build an Adirondack chair for a smaller child? It seemed like the perfect project for me to start on. First, we use the jigsaw to shape the arms of the chair. You're gonna place the board on here, uh -huh. holding it tight, keeping your hands away from the blade. Keenan demonstrates, then it's my turn. I'm gonna have to clean that one up a little bit. <laughs> clean that one up just a smidge, just a smidge. Next, we use something called a router to smooth the edges. See that? Now we have a nice rounded edge. Oh, wow. Edge. And this one, you can feel the difference. Yeah. So it gives it that nice rounded edge, no sharp corners. My turn. Wow, much smoother. It's much smoother. To speed things up, Keenan has pre-cut all the pieces we need to assemble the chair. So the, the entire chair is in front of us? Correct. Okay. Our first step is going to be driving some screws in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to attach this piece right like so, just like that. Just like that? Yep. <laughs> this, is a, this is cathartic. Oh, it is. This is cathartic. We talk as we work about our lives and our families. The minutes slip by, and you can start to see the chair take shape. All right, here it here is. Here we go. Here we go. Yes. There you go. I am now a woodworker. Great not, job. Not really. Great I know, job. But here's the thing. This is a lot of fun. Yeah. And it's also really cool to be able to look and see something that you've created. Yeah, you, you know? know this. Working with my hands, learning something new, taking the time for myself. I help build a chair and so much more. I want my kids to be able to like see dad make something. Dad did that. How cool would that be? Try This Today continues after the
We're so glad you stuck around. Chanel, Dylan, Craig, and I recently went to a boozy candle making class, and we'll say it sparked a lot of laughs. It'll all make sense when you see this. Most people use candles to wind down, but for us, it was a good excuse to get out of Studio 1A and Welcome. get Come lit. On, are, you? are you guys ready to re-wax and unwind? Yeah. Actually, yeah. Craig waxed just before we got here. <laughs> I love it. Don't encourage that. My name is Ashley. I am the founder and franchisor of Rewax and Unwind. I understand the wax part, the candle. What's the unwind part? Oh, we're going to be drinking. Oh. <laughs> oh wow. Our first stop, the fragrance station to test our senses. So, Craig, what do you think this one is? It smelled uh, akin to vanilla, but it's not. I actually took this from the Spirits and Cocktails. Ooh. And okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. Great job, Al. <laughs> so this one is under the clean category, OK? OK. What is? I know it. It's on the tip of my tongue now, too. <laughs> Dryer sheet. Yeah, it's like I'm thinking like baby wipes. Baby powder. Oh, oh yes. Yes. very good. Yes. Ashley directing us to sniff away and write down our favorite aromas. Oh, I hate hazelnut. Ooh, this is nice. Smell this, moonflower. I like that. You know what? Yeah. I'm surprised that I picked Axe body spray. <laughs> oh my god, so we're so bad. Almost bubble gummy. Okay. Honeysuckle? Moonflower. Yeah. Smells like um, deodorant. As Ashley got our next station ready, we uncorked and unwind. Toast. To the nonsense people. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Oh, what, what, look at you. What did you say? To the nonsense people. Yeah, sense. Like sense? Yes. Very smart. Cheers. Wow, that was very nice. After we settled on our four fragrances, it was time to combine them at the candle making station, creating. Oh. Our signature scents. I've got the Sequoia English Oak, Bourbon, I've got Moonflower, and Old Library Books. Oh, you like smoky, dusty. I do. Kind of like me. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> OK, fine. I've got Fraser Fur. OK, very Christmassy. I've got Jasmine, Clean Linen, and Axe Body Spray. <laughs> Would you yeah. pick Dylan? Clean Linen, Sea Breeze, Vanilla, and Cucumber. Oh, I think I, I had Citra, oh, Citra, Fraser Fur. Old library, grapefruit. So we're going to determine how we're going to find our signature scent. The lids are already open for you. All you're going to do is say, does zucchini blossom go well with sandalwood rose, as an example? And you're going to move ah. your head back and forth. Oh. And puff. Yes. There you go. Mm. So the beakers, this is where the magic happens. You're literally going to go drop by drop until you get to 20 milliliters, OK? So you're going to say a little bit of zucchini blossom, a little bit of cinnamon. Okay. And okay. you're going to use your stirring utensil here, stir, and let your nose lead you to what you want to add next. I'm just trying to be polite, but Dylan smells like Robitussin. <laughs> I think so? Maybe it needs more vanilla. <laughs> That's not that bad. That smells like you have the flu. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I love it. You like Very that? mass plant, but sweet. Kind of like, like yourself. Ah, you like it? It sweet. I like I it a lot. I beg to differ on that one. OK, here we go. Now that's just, just kind that's of a nice, fresh. clean citron gourmet. You went to make Wait, I want out. Next, we poured hot wax into our mixtures, along with colored dyes and some special adornments. Once our candle creations dried, it was the moment of truth. So here are your candles, guys. What do you think? Listen, I <laughs> buy owls. Yes. I love mine. Like, I, I, this really? is really, really awesome. It's rare that I say this, but I choose Craig's. Oh, I give you my whip. Oh, I love the glitter on top. All in all, I think you'd agree. It was a sensational day to buddy up. Well, Cheers. Here's to these fantastic scents. Each one different and each one special. Aww. Just like all of you. Aww. Oh, wow, that was so sweet. I can't wait to give this to someone as a Christmas gift. <laughs> oh, very nice. By the way, Rewax and Unwind is franchising, so keep an eye out for one in your neck of the woods. We had a lot of fun trying these new activities, and we hope you'll get creative and try something new. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Al Roker. See you next time on Today All Day. The rush of the water, the thrill of the catch. For many, fishing isn't just a hobby or a career. It's a lifestyle. In the U.S., women account for roughly 10% of commercial fishermen, but they've long played a vital role in the global seafood industry. 
I'm Elena Besser. As a chef, recipe developer, and content creator, I'm always hungry to learn more about the people who keep our food systems running. So I'm heading out to meet two women making waves in the fishing world and creating more space for everyone at the table. Welcome to the lush forests, expansive beaches, and pristine rivers of Washington State's Olympic Peninsula. Pacific Coast indigenous peoples have called these bountiful lands their home for millennia. The Quinault Indian Nation is one of many tribes that fishes, hunts, and forages here. As a non-native, I'm fortunate to be invited to the Quinault Reservation by fishing guide and tribal member, Ashley Lewis. When I think about the rivers, the oceans, the lakes out here. What I think about is home. Ashley comes from a long line of Native Americans who fished these waters for years. In the 1850s, many tribes were forced to give up their land for white settlements, but they retained fishing and hunting rights on traditional lands. During the 1960s, as Washington State began infringing on those rights, Native Americans staged a series of protests known as fish-ins. These protests led to a landmark Supreme Court decision that protects Native fishing rights to this day. One activist at the forefront of that movement was Janet McLeod, dubbed the Rosa Parks of the American Indian Movement. Her advocacy has inspired generations of Indigenous trailblazers, including my guide. When they were forced to cede their land for newcomers, their waterscapes, the rivers, the lakes. It makes so much sense that that was the thing that's like, no, we have to have this because it's so essential to who we are. Quinault tribal members have exclusive hunting and fishing rights on a portion of this river. I couldn't wait to see Ashley's favorite fishing spots with the help of fellow guides, Ruben Estevio and John Tater Bryson. If you want to think like a fish, just think like a really lazy person. Great. Like what is going to be the easiest thing to do? Uh -huh. Is it, do you want to go up that fast water? Not really. You right. want to kind of be in like the slow, easy water. Time for a quick casting lesson. We're just gonna swing straight back, and then we're gonna swing straight forward. You can kind of feel when the current catches it. Okay. Go ahead and give it a shot. That was a good cast. Thank that was you. a great cast. That's high praise coming from Ashley, who's been a guide here for the past decade. Now she's become something of a celebrity among outdoor enthusiasts, amassing a large following on social media where she goes by the handle Bad Ash. Her YouTube and Instagram pages are chock full of how-to videos and inspiring content from her many outdoor adventures. Can you explain to me some of the, you know, stereotypical experiences that you have had that have been a little bit tough as a female fisherman in this community? Being a woman in a male-dominated sport poses challenges. Some people want me to stay in a lane that isn't my lane. I would like to see the outdoor industry be more welcoming to women. I would like to see it be more welcoming to women of color and people of color. I feel really proud to get to chip away at that on my own terms. There we go. Reconnecting with the Quinault and their fishing traditions has been a journey for Ashley. She grew up removed from her tribe, living an hour off the reservation with her mom and two siblings. I grew up in a really small community, moved to a smaller community, one stop light in town sort of deal. And you had two options. You um, get in trouble or you go fishing. Okay. And I picked fishing. <laughs> I love it. And why did your mom choose to raise you off of the reservation? She experienced a lot of adversity as a younger woman and as a Native American woman. And so some of that adversity caused her to be really protective of her kids. And she wanted us to love our culture. The Quinault are a matriarchal society. Women serve as the head of the household and often take on tribal leadership roles. The women here also help with traditional food gathering. Ashley grew up fishing with her mom, but didn't always appreciate the cultural meaning behind these trips. Tell me a little bit about how you met your tribal family. So about the time that I got a driver's license and I could take myself fishing, <laughs> things really changed for me. <laughs> and so I would kind of drive out to the reservation, explore a little bit, being out there among other Quinaults, fishing for salmon, that's everything that I needed. Yeah. And so that moment was profound to me. John Tater Bryson, one of the first professional guides she met on the reservation, soon became her mentor. I was taught from a young age how to harvest 
elk and deer and fish. And it's passed on to the younger people, so the tradition will keep going. I think I got something. Oh, you definitely do. What a cutie. Oh, hey, my guy. Bye. Ashley enjoys showcasing this beautiful place to new people, but she's also made it her mission to call out the effects of climate change to this land. What we're seeing here, this is a big slide, and we're seeing a lot of this along our river, and this is the effects of climate change. She's currently earning a PhD in Indigenous Studies, with plans to educate people about the tribes of the PNW and the environmental threats they face. With the weather warming, with different rain patterns, it changes the river, but it also changes where fish are going to be spending time. Fishing guides are like an indicator species because we're the ones out in the river day in and day out. We're the ones who see changes happening really quickly. Because of the climate threats to the Quinault, the Biden administration granted the tribe $25 million to help relocate members in flood-prone areas. This is, you know, ancient village sites. This is burial ground sites. And so to see those places washed away, this is a really significant blow to us. Indigenous people are generally the first impacted by climate change, especially if you're situated right on the Pacific Ocean. Sustainability practices are tenets for the Quinault. Three tribal-run fish hatcheries help maintain the populations of salmon and trout species that call this river home. Every spring, millions of salmon and steelhead are released from these hatcheries. So we were a few miles upriver fishing, mm -hmm. but now we're here at the mouth. The Pacific Ocean is right on the other side of our fish house here, and this is where tribal members come and set their nets and commercially fish for blueback sockeye. It's the only place in the world where our blueback sockeye run, so okay, it's an great. incredibly special fish to us. Commercial salmon fishing is a big part of the economy on the res. The most efficient way to get a big catch is by using a method called gill netting. Gill nets are placed near the mouth of the river to catch salmon by the gills as they head upstream. Whoa, double trouble. That's a huge one. As a chef, I've cooked fish many different ways, but this was the freshest catch I've ever tried. Cooking salmon the way her tribe has for generations is a cherished pastime for Ashley, who celebrates her culture through food. The fish is a really wonderful, tasty, oily fish, mm -hmm. and we just wanna highlight the greatness that already lives here. A Little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. The flavor that we're gonna give it really is gonna come from the alder fire and the cedar sticks. After the fish is on the pole, it's supported with cedar sticks woven across the filet. The salmon cooks until it turns light pink, another five minutes, then it's ready to serve. So now we can enjoy ourselves some Quinault fish sticks. Let's do it. Oh my gosh. Mm. I'm never ever gonna look at a normal fish stick ever again in the same way. <laughs> comes right off of that skin. It really doesn't need anything else. Let the food shine. Absolutely. Yeah.
after an incredible day of catching and cooking fish on the Quinault River, it was time for a trip to the beach. At sunrise, my guide Ashley Lewis and tribal biologist Scott Mazzoni are ready to show me another local pastime, digging for razor clams. Can you tell me a little bit more about what we're doing today? We are getting ready to have uh, uh, home use digs, subsistence digs, and commercial digs of razor clams. And before we do that, we got to go out and get clam samples and test them to make sure there's no toxins in them and they're self, uh, safe for people to eat. Pacific razor clams are a meaty shellfish with an oblong shell. They can grow up to six inches. They're also a delicacy here and a major part of the quinault diet. So we're gonna use these spade tempered shovels. They're kind of curved in a way that makes it easy for us to dig the clams. Great. So we're gonna head out to the surf. We're gonna look for clam shows. As we walk towards the surf, Ashley points out small holes and dimples in the sand. These are known as clam shows, evidence that razor clams are just beneath the surface. That looks like a good spot. Whoa! There we are. Down here they have their foot and that they can use to dig very quickly down into the sand. Hey. He's like, I'm out of here. Thank you and goodbye. Ooh. I gotta tell you, even though it's 5 a.m., all of this razor clam digging is making me extremely hungry and ready to eat them. <laughs> and they are as delicious as they are fun to dig. <laughs> It was finally time for me to see what all the fuss is really about. At nearby Ocean Crest restaurant, razor clams are a menu staple. Head chef Amanda Yeager has prepared a few of their signature dishes made with fresh local clams. On the menu, a panko crusted razor clam steak served with pickled onions and a chili aioli. There's also a razor clam omelet, plus a flatbread topped with Amanda's house-made razor clam sausage. Mmm, there's a common misconception with large clams, you know, oh, would it taste rubbery, but this does not at all. That's a lot of how it's treated. It's, you know, low and slow heat, and that's why they maintain their flavor and their texture. Respect. Wow. So much. Everyone knows and loves a chicken cutlet. This is so tender on the inside. You're getting an amazing crisp exterior. That crunch and acidity coming from the onion, it is the perfect bite. As my time on the Quinault land comes to a close, I'm already sad to leave this incredible place. Ultimately, at the end of the day, if you could say one thing to the people that are watching this, what, what would you want them to know? about you and about this community. My very favorite piece about guiding is not actually the fishing. It is the way that it changes the way people start seeing the natural world. It could tell a lot about history. It could give you a lot of information. But I do know from my experience that when people are there and experience it, they're going to become curious, and that's what I want the most.
When it comes to high-end seafood, lobster is pretty much king. Maine is the largest lobster producer in the country, with catchers here harvesting over 100 million pounds of the crustacean every year. I've just always admired the fishermen, and to even be able to say that I'm a fisherman just means so much to me. Sadie Samuels is the only female commercial lobster boat captain in the small town of Rockport. Her day starts before sunrise when she buys bait for her traps. Hi, Sadie. Welcome. Oh, it's so great to find you. Look at this stunning place of work. Are you kidding? With its rocky underwater terrain and cool waters year round, the Gulf of Maine is a perfect home for lobsters. Bye, guys. The lobster industry here generates over $1 billion for the state. But those big bucks aren't made easily. Fishing for lobsters is one of the most dangerous professions. The fatality rate is 2.5 times the national average. Can you tell me a little bit more about how dangerous this job actually is? It's one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. The first funeral I ever went to was one of the fishermen in my harbor who went out by himself and he got rope, like die on, so he on drowned. lobster. Yes, he drowned. Why do you stay in this despite all of the pain and dangers that you experience on a day-to-day -day basis? I literally never imagined doing anything else with my entire life. Sadie's passion for fishing stems from her childhood. Her father, Matt Samuels, has been catching lobsters for over 60 years. He was up before sunrise and out the door, and then he'd get home and he'd just work until dark and come in and eat dinner and pass out. So the only way I could really hang out with him was if I wanted to like get involved with what he was doing. And then I just duck around and I never left. <laughs> When she was just seven, Sadie got her student lobster license. She began working right away, dropping a couple traps off her dad's boat for extra cash. By age 14, she saved enough money to buy the boat she still fishes with today. I don't think I fully considered that it was like my career or gonna be my career until a little bit later in life, until I was like 14, 15. I love how you said later in life when I was about 14. I just <laughs> <laughs> started getting serious about it. You were 14. That is hilarious and amazing. After studying art in college, Sadie quickly returned to a life at sea. Like when I'm out here, I'm just like, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Today, Sadie doesn't just catch lobsters, she also dishes up fresh lobster rolls at her sea to table restaurant, also named Must Be Nice. I would like you to walk me through your day from start to finish, so lay it on me. <laughs> so my average day is waking up around four o'clock, quarter to four, go to the boat, and then we haul about 250 traps, crate up the lobsters that we're bringing over to the restaurant, and then the restaurant closes at seven. In Maine, just 15% of lobster licenses are held by women. But anyone who catches lobsters is called a lobsterman, which Sadie stands behind. How do you feel about the term lobsterman? I'm very much on the side of like, I'm a fisherman, I'm a lobsterman. I busted my butt and paid my dues. Nothing I do really has to do with my gender. Maine fishing laws have strict limits on the number of traps new lobstermen can set. Over time, they can acquire more traps, but it can take several years to make a livable wage. How did you get savvy with making sure that you could function as a successful business? That's actually how I started Must Be Nice Lobster, is on Saturdays, someone was looking for someone to sell lobsters at a farmer's market. I started selling live lobsters there, and then now we're here. The trap limits are part of Maine's successful conservation efforts. In the 90s, there were around 37 million pounds of lobster in the Gulf of Maine. Today, it's nearly 120 million pounds. Fishermen actually were the ones who started to put a lot of those practices in place. Those regulations impose strict sizing guidelines. Sadie actually throws back many of the lobsters she catches. That one will be good next year. Small lobsters are too young for sale, while many older, large lobsters get thrown back to breed. So this is a, a big hard shell female. You can see on her, if you turned her the other way, She's it's the second terrain swimmerette has this mutilation on it. Got it. Which means that 
someone else has caught her before with eggs on it. A keeper lobster has a body that measures between three to five inches. It can take a lobster about seven years to reach that size. Finally, a lobster that was just right. Look at those claws. Nice male, really gorgeous lobster. He's definitely a keeper. Yeah, you're coming home with us, babe. Climate change is making these size regulations more crucial than ever. The Gulf of Maine is one of the Earth's fastest warming bodies of water, which can make lobsters more vulnerable to disease and less likely to reproduce. Why is sustainability so important to you? We're so connected with nature and so connected with our environment that it like feels like our duty. At Sadie's restaurant, she's dedicated to sourcing her ingredients sustainably. The lobster chowder uses a seafood stock made from an invasive crab species. And she's adding a new locally raised item to the menu. This season we're adding in oysters and I'm super excited because we're trying to focus as much as we can on female owned farms and also the quality of the seafood is like outstanding. To get a sneak peek at her new menu offering, Sadie took me to meet farm manager Bonita Johnson at Wright Cove Oyster Farm. So tell me a little bit more about these oysters. We're a small operation here, and so we do kind of everything by hand. Wow. And uh, yeah, they're raised with love. You and, can taste it. And yeah, <laughs> you really can. Do you want to try one real quick? Um, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> sorry, I've been waiting sorry. over here. <laughs> Here we go. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. These are hands down some of my favorite oysters mm. ever. So clean, but briny. I've never had anything like this before. I'm blown away. You don't do anything in the working waterfront type of industry unless you have passion for it. Mm -hmm. And that's a really nice thing for us to like get to share with each other. Yeah. This is definitely my happy place. Back at Must Be Nice, Sadie is steaming our catch before picking meat for her signature lobster rolls. Hey, fresh caught, fresh cooked. I just had to know the secrets behind the Sadie sauce lobster roll. So how did you come up with the sauce? So I've had plenty of people, you know, from away say that Maine's lobster rolls are really boring. And I kind of took offense to that. I was yeah. like, you know what? I gotta come up with something that like packs a punch, has a bit of a spice. It starts with shallots, celery, and parsley blended in a food processor. Sadie then adds a not so secret blend of dried herbs and spices. Can you reveal what's it's in this spice It's mainly blend? paprika. The spicy part is cayenne. A mix of lemon juice and rice wine vinegar kick up the acid. And then there's a generous squeeze of stone ground mustard. Now we just add in the rest of this olive oil and then I'm gonna blend it for a little while until that just seems totally incorporated. There we go. 
Oh, that is gorgeous. And that is the Sadie sauce. Sadie packs each toasted bun with a hefty handful of lobster meat. Look at this. Are you kidding me? To finish, a sprinkling of homegrown chives. I can't wait to try that. I'm so pumped. Inspired by Sadie's creativity, I wanted to make something special, a lobster BLT. One of my favorite foods in the summertime is a BLT. And mm -hmm. it really screams summer. And also what screams summer is a juicy lobster roll. So I figured they would pair beautifully together. We're starting with cherry tomatoes. And the reason why I sliced the tomatoes first is because I like to hit them with a little bit of salt. Yes, I brought oh, yeah. a little flaky salt. And what this is gonna do is it's really just gonna pull out all those flavors and make them taste as juicy and delicious as possible. This is my best pal mayo. I spice up my mayo with grated garlic, the juice and zest of a lemon, black pepper, and chives. It's such an honor to like cook with the lobster that you have caught. So I just, <laughs> first of all, wanna say thank you because this is like the coolest. You are more than welcome. It is my joy. This is a meat lover's dream. So we're going to add two pieces of bacon Woo! on either side. We're then gonna take a gorgeous lettuce leaf and that's like the boat that's gonna catch all that sauce for us. Just add the lobster, cherry tomatoes, and a final sprinkle of chives. Voila. Well, that is gorgeous. And there you go, BLT lobster roll. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh, this might fall Cheers. over Cheers, if it does, it's part of the fun. Cheers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Holy moly. Oh man. This is insane. This Sadie sauce is slamming. Hubba hubba. I'm honestly having a hard time hearing what you're saying because I'm having a moment with this one over here. Oh my God. This is literally perfection. Yay. At dinner, I couldn't wait to learn more from the women here who support each other through their passion for fresh local seafood. When people see that this is a sea to table restaurant and then they find out that you ladies were the ones that actually caught and grew the food that is being served here. What do they say to you? I feel like people, they're super excited about it and really happy that they found us. Then they can taste it with the quality of our seafood or they're in complete disbelief in like, okay, yeah, but your dad caught these. So they're literally saying to you, <laughs> No, this is a man's job. Well, I think some people have been a little too sheltered and just haven't gotten to see what us women can do. <laughs> Amen. And it's up to that. us to show them. Honestly, that's Cheers. another opportunity to toast. I love it. Time to dig in. Mm. I'm really into this BLT one. This is going on the menu, by the way. <laughs> Elena's roll. We're going to call it Elena's roll. Yeah. Ladies, this is a dinner I will never forget, so I truly can't thank you enough for all of your hard work in making this happen, and thanks for hanging out with me. From the smoky salmon of the Quinault Nation to the buttery, sweet lobster of Maine, I'm in awe of our nation's most delicious seafood. But I'm most inspired by the women paving their own paths in this industry and ensuring future generations will have plenty of fish in the sea. Hi, everybody. Good morning. It's Tuesday, a state of emergency unfolding across the Northeast. Yeah, and it is far from over. It is July 11th. This is today. Catastrophic evacuations ordered in.